Don't even think they'll forget next year who voted yes. We'll remind them. The only thing that can stop this is a no vote or an abstention by you legislators. Say no to Governor Abercrombie and Blake Oshiro, who are pushing this bill. Stand up for righteousness. Thank you. Thanks very much. Next, please. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Hawaii State Legislature. My name is Wendell Lum. My number is 3802. This is one of the largest sins that I see that could be happening by the men and ladies of the Hawaii State Legislature. It's not about the Constitution. It's not about equality. It's not about civil rights. We are all sinners according to the Bible from the beginning with Adam and Eve. Men are always making changes to our laws and many different opinions about the scriptures in the Bible, God's word. Do you know what happens when and when we die? There are only two places where we go. When we die, we can even go to heaven if we want to or hell. The Lord sent Jesus to earth and he knew that he was going to die. But in three days, he rose from the dead. We can go to heaven if we want to, if we repent all of our sins from the past, present, and the future, we can be born again. That means changing directions and doing good things, relying on the Lord and the scriptures in his word. There is no salvation in other gods on this earth, and the Bible tells it in the Ten Commandments. I see the legislature voting yes as an added sin unless repentance by individual politicians is done honestly and with a sincere heart that the Lord will know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. My name is Mrs. Jacqueline Franco and my number is 3829. I strongly oppose SB1 and would not like to see this bill pass. I cannot understand why this bill has not come to the people for our vote and frankly the fact that my vote is being taken away is completely unacceptable. I have listened to many testimonies on the very first day of the session and throughout the week and unless I'm not hearing correctly, the majority of these testimonies were opposing SB1 just as I am. The people of Hawaii has made it very, very clear that we do not want this bill passed, but even louder voices have shouted to let the people vote. Why does the governor and legislators who are in favor of SB1 think that our votes are not necessary? Contrary to one of the comments made by Senator Espero on the final day of the Senate hearing, when he said that one of the reasons that we, we the vote should not go to the people is because things such as commercials, media, etc may be influencing our thoughts and subsequently our votes. To his remarks, I want him to know that I'm not influenced by any of these things, but instead by my own God-given human right to choice and agency, and for these reasons, I would exercise the vote of my choice. I just wanted to make that clear because Senator Espero made it sound like our votes would be made on a whim, and I found his remarks very offensive. The opposition may feel that their right to equality is at stake here, but what really is at stake here is something greater. If this bill passes, there will be detrimental ramifications that will cause such a ripple effect probably greater than your I can imagine. Future generations long after we are gone will be bearing the harmful, damaging, and destructive results of this decision and the Hawaii you and I were born and raised in and have grown to love will be gone forever. The people of Hawaii, all people, have every right to be given the opportunity to vote on an issue of such vital magnitude and consideration needs to be given to the people. I plead with you to hear my testimony, along with the thousands of others who feel the same as I do, and allow us, the people, to use our agency to vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Chairman Rhodes, Chairman Luke, committee members, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My number is 3964, and my name is Ronald Nip. I submitted my written testimony to all of you, but it was not recorded because I did it too soon. I apologize. I, I wish you had it in front of you. Um, anyway, I'm a husband to my wife, Kathy, a father to my children, Kristen and Ronald, and a grandfather to my grandson, Caleb. I oppose this bill, its content, and its ideology. 
I attended the hearing on Monday and I heard a lot of different views from both sides of the issue. And it became clear to me that a decision by that committee had already been made. And the public testimony was just a required gesture to show that input was provided. Yes, input was provided. And the record will show that the majority of it was by citizens seeking their right to vote on this important issue. I am hopeful that this committee will see the merit of how deeply the citizens and myself feel about this issue and allow us to vote on it. Kill SB1 in this committee. I ask you to vote no on the record regarding SB1 at the close of this hearing. And I also ask that you support a vote by the people on any future legislation that has or will have the potential to change the current language of Article 23 of the state constitution. I would like to add that your service to the people is what your jobs are based on. Everything else is just details. At the end of the day, you did not submit a resume to an employer and was selected from a best qualified pool of applicants. No. You were selected for this job by the voters who elected you to that, from that pool of applicants known as a voting ballot. Make no mistake, my time is getting short. The LGBT lobby, its organized efforts and its militant agenda and its monetary con contributions are staring you in the face, but so are. Many of the registered voters whose voices I hope are not being ignored. SB1 is being heralded as a sweeping change by its supporters. I am predicting another sweeping change come election time in this state if this bill becomes law. I will elaborate, I will elaborate more, but my two minutes are up. Um, there's a few points that I'd like to make, but I apologize and I realize that everybody has only two minutes, so my two minutes are up. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next, please. The number I've received is 3815. My name is Roman Pearl. Growing up, my mom always taught me to love everybody. And I've done my best to love everyone. I'm asking you, the House of Representatives, to please listen to the majority of the people and to please show your love to everyone here by voting no on this bill. Because we came to this earth to act, not to be acted upon. And so please let us act. Please let the people vote. Please let the people decide. Let us act. And do not. Do not vote yes on this bill. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for everyone else. Thank you. Next up. Aloha. Aloha. My number is 3962. I vote no. And um, my mother's uh, name is Annie Malia Puai. My father's name is Matthias Kularong uh, Benzon. M my name is Anthony Benzon. I vote no. Uh, and, and I don't know, I don't like uh, AIDS and um, crabs. Okay, next up. <laughs> the number assigned to me is uh, 3961. And my name is James Koloi Okui A. Baker. I'm native Hawaiian. Born and raised in Nanakuli, Ea. <clears throat> We've heard a lot of talks, a lot of passionate people, beautiful. I love it. But I am opposed to SB1 specifically because of the hurried nature of to have it passed through the legislature. I've been reading up on SB1 and looking back on the language of HB uh, 117 back in 1998, which I was a part of, I voted yes in that matter. And I'm looking at the language and I'm arguing that uh, it is subject to interpretation. It says the legislature shall have the power to reserve marriage to opposite sex couples, but it does not state or imply that the legislature has exclusive power or absolute power to reserve marriage to opposite sex couples. I believe in my interpretation of it is the legislature having joint power along with the people of Hawaii in this matter. And I reference from scripture, but I take it from 
the King James Version of the Holy Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1, which states, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Am I to believe that the Lord relinquished his power to his twelve? I say no, because later on he, really, he raised Lazarus from the dead. In the same way it is with the people of Hawaii and its legislature. We are hand in hand, joint heirs. We conferred upon you the power to act on behalf of us because we don't can come here every single day. You guys come all the time. You guys know the language. But you got to work alongside with us to get things done. And vice versa, we, the people of Hawaii, need to work alongside with our legislators. Thank you very much. Next up, please come up. Chair Rhodes and Luke, members of both committees. I'm number 3905, and my name is Randall Allred. I'm here to voice my opposition to SB1. If this were simply a matter of equal rights, this measure would be another matter altogether. But what is being sought here is the redefinition, or rather deconstruction of marriage as we've understood it. Governor Abercrombie is ignoring the prerogatives of the legislature, which reveals his clear scorn for the legislative process and for the will of the people. This legislature, despite a clear majority of voters who oppose this session, is voting on a bill that may not be debated or changed. To borrow a phrase from President Obama, that is not what America is all about. Marriage is not a right, but a privilege, and one that the state has direct interest in protecting. Recognizing that the family is the basic building block of society, and that the biological family is the best way to provide for the general welfare and to protect children. Same-sex marriage advocates know that it will undefine marriage to the point that the family will lose its legal definition. They're quite open about this goal. About eight years ago, the Beckett Fund, a think tank, sponsored a symposium of legal scholars on this issue. Most were in support of same-sex marriage, some were not. But their conclusions were startling. They all agreed that same-sex marriage would mean a huge fundamental change in American law. A sea change, as one put it, a dangerous train wreck, as another put it, and that it was impossible to predict its far-reaching effects. Fools rush in, or even lawyers fear to tread, sometimes. I defy anyone in the House to express any absolute confidence in this bill's ability to prevent religious discrimination. The governor and others have expressed enough contempt for religious values as to destroy any confidence in their goodwill or in the bill's resilience in resisting new hate crime laws, a pro-homosexual curriculum in the schools, and financial threats for churches that do not change their doctrines and practices. These issues are too fundamental to be decided in a bill that the governor clearly does not want to be examined very deeply. The fate of human liberty and individual conscience is at stake. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Next up, please come up. My number is uh, 3817. Aloha. Aloha. I am J. Michael Hughes, Jr. I was born in Hawaii and I love Hawaii. I am proud and happy to be from Hawaii. As a young voter of this generation, I want to be able to raise a family and children in a morally right culture where the school systems and government don't force them to learn and know something they don't believe in, like they do now in Massachusetts. The young voters of Hawaii believe in the culture of Hawaii, the aloha spirit. We want freedom to live life in a pr place where the culture has good morals and good values. As the voice of the future, we say that we want to live life right morally and right under Jesus Christ. I and 70% of the voters are against same-sex marriage, and we believe let the people decide. We will reflect the strong opinion in all the upcoming elections in Hawaii. We are the voters, the workers, and the candidates for the future of Hawaii. People can be what they want to be. We have aloha for everybody, but don't force their lifestyles and morals on our children and down the throats of our future. Keep country, country. Keep Hawaii, Hawaii. Keep family, family, and keep Hawaii sacred. Mahalo and may God bless you. Thank you. Next up. Good afternoon, um, represent, um, Chairman Carl Rhodes and Sylvia Luke and District Representatives. 
Thank you for hearing my testimony. My name is Joshua Cohen. I'm born and raised here in the island. I'm a voting resident uh, of, from IAEA number 3901. I can't forget that number. I've been telling everyone that's my number. I am a concerned citizen under the age of 25, and I strongly oppose, oppose Section Bill, uh, Senate Bill 1. On my head, I have a hat, and uh, this hat was given to me by my brother, and uh, it's actually one of my favorite hats. I bought it at Fitted, Hawaii, $40, and, it, and I wear it everywhere I go because I have Hawaii on my mind. I have carried Hawaii with me wherever I've gone. I recently graduated from the university in Dallas, Texas, and I got my whole campus to say aloha and chihu. <laughs> I was offered a job in the mainland, but I chose to come back and serve my community, my people, and this state because Hawaii is on my mind. This is my home. I am now a youth pastor at First Assembly of God and working with students from across this island. From Waianae to Hawaii Kai, I'm teaching moral values, challenging students to live their dreams helping them understand their God-given identity, sexuality, and image. Why? Because Hawaii is on my mind. With the vast majority of your people, the people of Hawaii, speaking in opposition to SB1, I want to ask you, in light of the consequences of which we've seen in various states, is Hawaii on your mind? Are the minds of the keiki and the students across Hawaii and the public schools on your mind? Are the parents of these children on your mind? Business owners who flourish on building their company on traditional moral beliefs, are they on your mind? Is the future of Hawaii, education, health, commerce, and recreation, are they on your mind? This issue is of great uh, importance and will deeply affect all parts of society. This is not an issue of progressive movement, but is a moral one. I understand that people of Hawaii are known for being late, we call it Hawaiian time in which a lot of people suffered from in these past couple of days, I have sad to say. But Hawaii is not falling behind if we do not pass this bill, but it will show all the states that we are truly a state perpetuated in righteousness. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. Next up, please come up. Aloha, my name is Janet Marlette. My number is 3890. I live in District 24. I stand on my submitted testimony and I add, I oppose SB1. We could argue all day about the intention of Article 1, Section 23 of the State Constitution. The fact of the matter is that when we voted in 1998, we believed that you, the legislature, would honor our voices. We believe this because when several unions came up in 2011, you stated in the Hawaii Revised Statutes, specifically 572C-2, and I quote, the legislature finds that the people of Hawaii choose to reserve the tradition of marriage as a unique social institution based upon the committed union of one man and one woman. One thing that cannot be argued is that the people of Hawaii still choose to preserve the tradition of marriage. This bill is seriously flawed in the way that it lacks protection for the hundreds of thousands of people of different faiths who believe that the union of marriage is sacred between one man and one woman. You just can't invalidate that with a loosely worded bill that gives religious exemptions. This bill also has a lack of vetting to the point of not knowing what consequences to our society lie ahead for future generations. You have an obligation to the people who put you in office to study this incredibly divisive bill for more than the one week that you've been discussing it. Finally, Justice Levinson spoke about the legislature being given the authority to make this decision, and I agree with him. However, I expect the legislature to vote the will of the people who put you in office, and with the show of incredible opposition to this bill, I would expect your vote to be no to SB1. Thank you very much. Aloha. Thank you. Next up. My name is Raynette Lavatai Henry, and my number is 3955. I come here um, to stand for my family, my family values of marriage. And I remember when I was little, um, I had to move to Hawaii to live with my grandparents. I, 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 was, I went to school here from kindergarten to um, till graduation and then I left for about seven years. I had two children and realized, you know what, I don't want to raise my children in Seattle. I need to take them back home and have them raised in Hawaii. I am a mother, 
um, a wife, I have a wonderful husband, and I am a mother of 10 children. I am a professional homemaker. And my job is to make sure my children are safe. And my job is to uh, impart into my children the values, the difference between right and wrong. And um, today I come before you because I believe that our children are the future. And what we impart into them now, the next generation will be better. I remember signing up my child, um, looking um, to sign up electives, and I seen the GSA, and then I couldn't understand that. It was a gay straight uh, um, alliances or something, and I didn't think that that was okay for my child. But um, I really believe that I came here to raise my children and I asked my 10-year-old son, what did he think about this? He said, Mom, if they pass the law, do we have to move to Georgia? I said, no. And then he asked me again, um, Mom, well, I don't want to see two men walking around in Hawaii. Hawaii is not the place that I remember to see um, such a thing. So I'm here to stand in the gap for my family right now. And I trust that you guys would allow me to stand up for my family. Allow me to vote for my family today. Thank you for letting me share. Okay, next, please come up. Hi, my name is Josh Castro, number 3873, and I strongly oppose SB1. This bill is an attack on our religious freedom and an attack on the future of our children. I speak on behalf of my family, You know, growing up, my dad taught me things that my mom couldn't. And my mom taught me things that my dad couldn't. A man cannot be a, a, man cannot be a good mother, and a woman cannot be a good father. There is nothing like a mother's comfort, and there is nothing like a leadership of a father. God called the men to be the, the leaders of the house, and this will just confuse the children. Right now, I stand here, and... I mostly see adults for this bill. And you see us bringing the children because that's what we stand for. I don't need to tell you what's going on in Massachusetts and Canada. You guys already heard that. You guys already heard what God said. You heard all, all, all these scriptures. I don't have to remind you guys on that. Hearing the governor say that the majority does not matter, it really hurts. And it shows something wrong behind it. And the people is going to stand up. And we're not going to let this go down. So I oppose SB1. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise the name of Yahweh, the one God Almighty. Woo. Shalom, shalom, shaloha, and talofa. Hi, my name is Ruth Tanubasa. My number is 3,952. In the name of Yahweh, the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I cut down this bill. For Yahweh, the God Almighty, say, I am Yahweh, your God, who created the heaven and the earth, and who created men and women, and put them together to keep my oath, my covenant, and my commandment, and be fruitful and multiply on this earth. You shall not commit adultery, for adultery is homosexual, gay, lesbian, and all those sexual stuff. For I am a jealous God. 
paying back all the sins of the fathers and the mothers for their children's 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 forever to the third and the fourth generation and showing all my love to the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Ladies and gentlemen of the House Senate and Governor Apokwambi, God does not respect anybody or anyone, you, or me, or anyone, does not honor his commandments, his oath, and his name. He does not respect nobody. Therefore, listen, all you and all okay. of CIA. Thank Yahweh. you very much. This is the bill that Thank God you very much. forever and Excuse hates forever. Me. You need to respect kill the bill. Okay, kill can, the bill. And kill the bill. Now and person. forever and ever. Okay. Amen. I'll take the amen. next set of. Everybody say amen. Okay, again, if you folks are going to be disruptive and we're going to go into the wee hours, you know, we already had complaints from testifiers saying that they waited for a couple of days to testify. We're giving everybody a chance. Please respect the time limit. Okay, I'm going to ask for the next row of testifiers. Okay, please come up. My name is Henry Guerrero. My number is 3911. And greetings to uh, members of the House. What's the rush? The latest version of SB1 was dated 102813, which was on the first day of the session. Not enough time to even figure out what was changed. Many people were not even aware of this revision. It was frustrating to those who testified in front of the Senate committee. In this debate, I've heard a lot of themes, and um, I'll speak about them. A lot of the legislatures thought that times are changing, it's inevitable, and if this is the case, then let due process take its course. Why do you have to force this? Why, why call a special session if it's inevitable? As elected representatives, please represent the people of Hawaii as a whole and not people in other states that have set, uh, passed this bill. Contrary to what Senator Clayton, he has tried to equate this bill to, it does not compare with interracial marriage because same-sex marriage is and will always be a moral issue while interracial marriage is a social issue. Also, the legalization of abortion is more similar to the same-sex marriage in that the supposed right of a woman to abort will trample upon the right of an unborn baby to live. In a similar way, the values and results associated with same-sex marriage will interfere with and suppress the right of Bible-believing Christians to freely live by and teach traditional family values to their children and generations after them. Not enough time has been spent on addressing protections from the consequences of this bill. Parents have a hard enough time trying to keep their kids from being force-fed in the school system that same-sex partners are normal and accepted lifestyle. I ask that you do the right thing, okay, do your thank job, you very vote much. against this bill. Thank you. Next. Aloha. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Ron Shira. My number is 3918. My wife Cindy and I are strong opposition to Senate Bill 1 for many reasons that many have been already stated, but today I will focus on the, our ability to make crucial decisions, especially one that will greatly impact our children and the people of Hawaii. I'm a Christian, a husband, father of two, a grandfather, and a school administrator responsible for the welfare of many children and youth. Like you, making critical decisions is a major responsibility of what I do. I've learned not to rush on important and critical life decisions. 
This is something I share to young people that I'm responsible for, including my grandson. When faced with making critical, impactful decisions, I was taught to examine three things. First, a due diligence process to listen, understand, and talk to people that are affected and will be impacted by my decision. Secondly, I was taught to research, investigate, to confirm and validate the information. Third, to determine a responsible solution and make the decision. So step one, thank you for staying true to your word to allow everyone who wish to be heard to testify, no matter how long it takes. Step two, as I've followed these sessions, it is obvious to me that those that are in leadership and leading to pass SB1 have either done a poor job with step two, having little confirmation and validation to the determined impact on our state, there are too many unknowns. Or they do know the answers and understand that not sharing them might be the best way to pass this bill. Which one is it? I urge you not to skip over step two, the rush to step three, which is your decision to pass, kill, or amend the bill. I believe that at minimum, more time should be taken, so proper vetting and examining this bill during the regular session, that's our step two. Please listen to the people who elected you to serve us in a tremendous state. Please uphold the principles of democracy and let the people decide. Thank you. Okay, next up. Good evening. My name is Ryan Miller, number 3943. Thank you for letting me testify. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was protection of the small businesses. Say they don't agree with the lifestyle and let's go with a baker. Say they don't want to make the cake and put two grooms on the top or two brides on the top because they, from the their family, they've always been taught traditional marriage. Where's the protection for them? And there's supposedly protection for the pastors as long as it's not for profit. And where's the definition for profit in the bill? Is it as long as they say donation only? Or is it open to interpretation where they can take the um, all the money that goes into the church and the money, the bills that the church has, and as long as they're profiting are they a profit and the last thing is something that really struck my heart is that I've been hearing a lot of testimony about everybody being loving and that all they want is equality but my fiance who's a very compassionate woman she's seen one of the members of the LGBT they were distraught and she went up and asked just a simple question of, are you okay? Because that's her heart. She has a heart for people. And they started talking to her. They were nice. And then they asked her a simple question. Are you for or against? And when she said, I'm against, he turned hateful. And he just started getting real verbally abusive with her, telling her, I don't want to hear your talks about God. I don't want to hear anything about your Bible. And he verbally abused her for a couple minutes. And then at the end, all he said was, and there's your lesson. Is this the lesson we're going to teach your kids, my kids? Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Hello. My name is Jim Miller, and I'm 3941. I know that you've heard just about everything that can be said on both sides. So I want to deviate from that, and let's talk truth, okay? Truth of the matter, the Bill of Rights was put into the Constitution to protect the people, okay? Not only from the government, not only from the, or should you say majority of the people, but also from the minority who are trying to shove things down, the majority's and force them to do things that they would be against their rights. Another truth, our government did not get involved into marriage until, 18, until the 1860s. Until then, it was a product of the church. And that's where it should have stayed. But 
lawmakers passed laws to uh, keep people from having interracial marriages and having interracial sex. So instead of fixing the law and repealing the law, they figured, well, we can make money. We'll sell a license. Here's another fact. Black's Law, definition of a license. A granting someone the permission to do something that is wrong or illegal. The, the um, laws that were passed about interracial marriage were felonies. They weren't misdemeanors, they were felonies. So they decided to take money from people to allow them to do something that would normally be, Ill be illegal. Here's another truth. Taking money to allow someone to do something that, was, that is declared illegal is a bribe. All right, and I'm out of time, so I can't go on. Thank you very much. Next up. How's it, guys? Aloha. My name is Joseph Paul Kale Kuaiva Kim. I am Native Hawaiian. I know you guys have been up there all week, you know, doing your jobs, and I, too, thank you guys for the patience and listening to us speak. I speak on behalf of my father. Can you state your number first? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. My number is um, <laughs> 3996. I've been telling everybody. <laughs> but um, thank you guys and uh, everyone in the audience. Mahalo for every con all you guys' concern. The message to the people of Hawaii. I encourage you guys to... I collect and um, investigate. We do research on this bill. Because you know, these lawmakers, they, they want to they wanna hear us out and they want to know what is the right way to go. And I know that God will put them in their spot for a reason. And uh, I learned all my life, uh, God has a plan. So, if you'd like to pray with me, the Lord's Prayer, you do so. If Our Father, we God me. in heaven. Um, I don't want to be disrespectful to stop it while you're doing the prayer, but you only have so many seconds. I can do so, it. Well, then I'm going to stop you if it's during that time. Okay. And Our Father, somebody. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, wherever and ever. Amen. Thank you guys for your time. God bless you guys. Aloha. Thank you. Next up. Aloha. Uh, I'm Jesse Showalter, and uh, my number is 3993. I'm Jesse Showalter. I'm 29 years old. I'm married. I have two beautiful babies, and I'm a resident here in Hawaii. I'm a brother of a gay man and nephew of two gay aunties. I have to start this testimony off with these details and let you know that I love my family with all my heart. Whether they're L, G, B, or T, I love them unconditionally. That being said, I also have to share that I strongly oppose SB1 and same-sex marriage here in the state of Hawaii. My opposition may seem a little bit strange since it hits so close to home, but I'm here to say that it is possible to disagree without hate, to stand firm in your convictions and still be loving to those that see things differently. Is that not the true definition of tolerance? At this very moment, not only is the definition of marriage being redefined, but also the definition of tolerance. What was once Loving acceptance without agreement is now being redefined as forced agreement without a choice. There's hundreds of people outside, thousands on this island that don't agree with this bill. And they've been here day after day standing on tired feet and those very same convictions. That does not make them ignorant nor homophobes. We're not afraid of same-sex marriage. We just don't agree. And there's something else that we don't agree with. 
And that's the blatant disregard and gross usurpation of freedoms that's taking place right now. This bill has been pushed on the state by an emotive agenda that does not care about the effects it will have on all peoples and the freedoms of all peoples. How can you validate the giving of rights while simultaneously taking away rights from others? How can you validate something of that magnitude without first counting the cost? As questions are being asked and testimonies given, I hear a lot of I don't knows and let's let the court decide. We need solid answers and information before laws are passed. I wasn't old enough in 98, so I asked for my voice, not only my voice, but convictions. Thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Next up. Good afternoon. My name is Lee Chen. My number is 3894. I'm from China, and I have lived here for 12 years. I am an American citizen, and I have one boy and one girl. I apologize for my accent. This is my first uh, testify at uh, this capital. I'm very really strong opposed to SB1. China is a very strong and a huge population country. Right now, there are lots of Chinese tourists and uh, students come to Hawaii. I, I know, I think that is where I am from, that if same-sexual uh, same marriage is being promoted, we will lose many Chinese tourists and the students, because it is a very traditional country. Also, it is against the law to have a same sexual marriage. My family and the relative friend live at Shanghai, China. If SB1 pass, how to them thinking? They will not send their children study at Hawaii school. China only have one child, they spend all money on folks, their children, for best education. Please do not pass SB1, or please let the people vote. I beg you. I love you, my dear. Thank you. Hard work for us. Thank you for listening. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next up. Good evening. My name is Kathy. My number is 3989. And mahalo for having me here to testify today. I oppose Bill SB1. I do not support redefining marriage to include same sex. My freedom. Children of the same sex unions are intentionally denied a father or a mother, not because of justice in the world, but as a result of two adults in a same-sex relationship who decide that what they want is more important than what children need. That's no justice. In the Ten Commandments, it says, to honor thy father and thy mother, and I truly obey God's word. This bill will take away my freedom of religion. I want freedom and the right to worship God and help change the people's helpless hearts when they're in need. If you personally feel that same-sex marriage should be established in Hawaii, then you should do the right thing. Let the people decide. My son is gay. He was molested at eight years old. And I struggled for nine years dealing with this because he was molested in our neighborhood. Mahalo again, and God loves you. Thank you, next up. Hi, my name is Kelly Tixon, my number is 3982. Um, forgive me, I'm not um, used to speaking to a bunch of adults. I'm used to talking with children. <laughs> so um, I'm here to oppose SB1. Um, and as a parent, I'm concerned with the things to come after if this law is passed. Um, the curriculum changes to come that um, are to permeate the textbooks. Um, I can teach my children at home um, my beliefs. Uh, I can teach them Bible. 
but how long until my voice puts me in a position where I'm in trouble for being concerned about sensitive subject matter because it's no longer considered sensitive. Um, I've seen the things that are going on in Massachusetts and other states, and I've heard a lot of testimonies, and I know you guys already know as well. Um, I think by now a lot of people are aware, but um, when I was writing this, you know, a lot of people don't know about the people, the father that's arrested because he was concerned and wanted to opt out his child and um, was arrested for um, trespassing. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the story, um, but I know there are many parents in Hawaii that would probably do the same thing. Um, and then what happens to the people after that? And what happens to the teachers? Um, my church has many outreaches. It helps so many people, and we love and respect all people. And we have a Christian school. Does that count for profit, and does it tie to the nonprofit church? I'm not quite sure. Um, what happens if we are sued and have to pay for sticking to what we believe is truth? What will happen to our churches? What will happen to those outreaches? What will happen to those people that we won't touch because we, we can't? Um, our churches are not the building, they're the people. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next. Good afternoon. My name is Spike Tanaka, and my number is 3902. Uh, I am opposed to SB1 because this issue is not about rights or equality. The issue behind SB1 is about redefining the institution of marriage between a man and a woman. This challenge is in direct opposition to what the Word of God says. It is seeking to undermine what God has established here on earth. I realize that these words may hold little consideration before a legislative body and even of lesser value in the political process today. Yet, I believe in a higher authority, a supreme God who speaks to the hearts of men and women like you who are given authority by God to, to make wise decisions for the good of the people of this state. This is not a road that we will want to venture into for it will lead to unwanted and undesirable ends. It will be a road with no U-turns allowed. It will set the course of our future down a path that we will regret. I'm asking you today to listen, not merely with your mind, but with your heart as well. I know that you were elected to represent your constituents. I ask that you listen carefully to what they are saying. The future of this state lies in your hands. You have an incredible responsibility, but one that does not have to remain in your hands alone. I'm asking you to vote no on SB1 and to release your authority to the people to decide on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, is that the last one? Okay, so we're going to take questions from the group of testifiers who just testify. Any questions? Representative Carroll. Oh, you, sorry. Go ahead. Hello. Um, my number is 3912. Hi. My name is Holly Tanaka. I'm 19 years old. This bill is being debated for equality, but equality is not accomplished if the rights of one community are forfeited for the rights of another. This bill should give the rights the LGBT community wants but not at the expense of other citizens of Hawaii and the U.S. If you're trying to take away the rights of the religious because they can't, by their belief, by their services, condone a cause against their beliefs, you're simply taking on the exact kind of discrimination you are accusing them of. If the LGBT community has the right to live by the lifestyle they subscribe to, why can't the religious retain the same right? Or do you not believe in true equality? We do we don't want a right to hate, but to keep our right to maintain our religious integrity legally. I oppose this bill because of the negative effects it would have on our, on our culture and community. The problem is not giving the LGBT community equal rights, because they'll live the way they choose to regardless. 
But the issue is forcing by law on this state the idea that homosexuality is right, when that is not by any means recognized as fact by everyone. But if this bill does pass, I'd like to have assured to us our religious freedom, as well as the right to raise children in our own faith without the government trying to impose their own culture-shifting agenda on us through the school system in violation of our religious freedom. Also, there are thousands of people who you represent asking for one thing, let the people vote. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Representative Carroll. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to call up Lee Chin. Is she still here? Am I saying it right, Lee Chin? Um, number 3894. Three. Okay. They're going to look for okay. outside. Thank you, Chair. I'll okay. wait. We'll wait a little bit. Okay, anybody else? If not, well, Representative Warren. Thank you, Chair. Is Mr. Hughes here? Youth pastor? He's also talking economics with... Uh, Chinese visitors, then. Okay. Yeah. What was the What was the name? The, okay. The so, number, um, three there, eight one seven. Okay. Three eight one seven, three, eight, one, seven yeah. and Li Chen. Um, if they come back in, we can um, break and then ask them questions. Okay. Otherwise, uh, oh yes, Representative Jordan. Um, Jesse Snowwalter? He was 3993. Yeah, he's coming up. Oh, sorry. Hello. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for joining us today. I was very intrigued with your written testimony as well as your verbal testimony, seeing that um, you have a brother yes. that lives the GLDP lifestyle. Yes. As well as two aunts. Correct. How long were those aunts in your life? How Your whole life? Were they? Can, they are still in my life. Yes, yeah, sorry. 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 They're with us still, yeah. <laughs> so you grew up um, with them in? Well, uh, my aunt, um, when I was 15, um, chose her new lifestyle as a lesbian woman. Um, and after um, dating around or finding the right person, has now been with her partner for 11 years. And I notice you oppose SB1. Correct. I wasn't quite clear in your written testimony. You, you were re referencing the California passage of marriage equality. Elaborate a little bit more of why you would be against SB1. Uh, I'm in, or excuse me, I'm in opposition to SB1 um, because of a few reasons. One of them being um, the grayness um, uh, of the language, really. It does not protect um, rights of all people. And so I, I don't find it to be a successful or constitutional bill if it takes away rights or threatens rights of one party while giving rights to another. That's, that's really one of the most glaring things to me. Um, yeah. So basically, you're accepting of your family's lifestyles. But uh, no, and... Maybe I should have clarified that more as I spoke about tolerance. I love my aunts. I love my family. I love my brother with all of my heart. That does not mean that I accept every single choice that every single family member of mine makes. And so, no, um, I do not believe that the lifestyle is correct. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing from you regarding SB1, you don't feel it's balanced for both sides. I feel it very unbalanced. What, what do you think in SB1 we can do to make it more balanced? Uh, well, first of all, you could put an inseverability clause in. Uh, that's one of the most dangerous things you could ever see in a bill like this. Um, when months or years go down the line and the religious freedoms and protections are taken away and you would just see churches being put out on the street, people not being protected for their beliefs, and that is unconstitutional in my opinion. Something as dangerous as that not being protected with an inseverability clause is glaring and dangerous. So I'll, I'm just going to ask you a pointed question. Sure. You don't have a problem with 
same gender couples being married as long as we can balance it? I do have a problem with same gender couples being married. I do not agree okay. with same sex marriage. Okay, but you, if this was to pass, you would like to see something more balanced? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank yep. you, Jesse. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, oh, oh, sorry, Representative Brower. Um, thank you. I was going to ask Jesse uh, another question. Thanks. And we've had some um, great conversations uh, upstairs, so I appreciate you being here. Hello. To me, the bill's more a reaction about, you know, today's times and a vehicle to lead us somewhere. The bill, in part, is a way of governing and, to some extent, keeping the peace because of uh, a need that is arising. And I see the need arising with a lot of young people. Why wouldn't you want the state? I understand why you wouldn't want the church to recognize a union between your relatives uh, who may want to be in a same-sex relationship. But why wouldn't you want the state to recognize that relationship? Uh, well, if you're talking about the bill itself being a vehicle, um, I would... <laughs> I would humbly it's not a vehicle to lead us somewhere. I see the bill as a reaction to what's going on today in life. I would agree with you. It and, is and a reaction. It's, trying, it's a tool to, to better govern and allow uh, a, what I consider a large group of people. I would disagree with you. Some on reasonable that. rights. As it is a, a large enough. Sorry. Um, being um, a, a fair size for a minority group and just granting something I think is reasonable. But please continue. Um, I, I do agree with you that it is a reaction, but I believe it to be an incredibly emotive reaction. And the emotion has overwhelmed logic. The emotion has actually overwhelmed the rights of all peoples and is focusing on only the rights of some peoples. Um, and so again, therein lies the imbalance that I disagree with. And here's the irony. You and many people in the room agree on giving a same-sex couple every right, benefit, privilege that a heterosexual couple has in marriage, except that one eight-letter word. Is that correct? That's correct. So it's really about semantics. I suppose you could say it's about semantics, but I actually enjoy your comment during that sentence that stated that it's a privilege. So there's a difference between a right and a privilege. But you're willing, and, and many in this room, those lines. will give every privilege that a same-sex couple has, except that one word. Uh, if you're talking about federal benefits and rights, I tell you right now, one of the most heartbreaking stories was I that I heard. Okay, was, I think uh, oh. that's fine. Is he asking your answering your question? We'll I, I hope that I'm answering guys, them. I think you know a lot of times um, the members are asking questions to testifiers and using that as just to express your individual opinions. I think members need to understand. You know, at some point in time. You know, we're here to listen to the public and not the other way around. So, you know, let's get through the hearing. I mean, we've asked people to come back for the third day, and I think it's a disservice to keep them, you know, and as much as we agree to um, be here as long as we can, uh, it's kind of unfair for people to keep coming back. So, yeah, members, if I could also ask that, you know, I mean, you not repeat the same question to same test, uh, I mean, the testifier, same again and again, the same kind of question. I think at this point in time, you know, a lot of points on both sides have been made. So with that, are there any other questions? Yes, Representative Carroll. Hi, aloha. Aloha. You may or may not want to answer this question, but I was just curious. Um, you know, I have a sister who's also um, gay and you mentioned that you are not in support of the lifestyle. Correct. And, and I'm not sure if your sibling knows your position or if you still have a relationship with, I have a relationship with my younger sister. I guess my question to you is, what would it look like if the state could have legislation that would offer the same kind of benefits as we're trying to accomplish here, in your mind and in your wisdom, what would that legislation look like? You know, I, I would love to answer the question. I wish that I was more knowledgeable to give you the language or the legislation. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't answer the question. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to answer, ask you that. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, anybody else? Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the next set of testifiers. Madam Chair, was, was Lee Chen found? Left. left. She left. Oh, okay, thank okay. you. Okay, please step forward. Come on up. And thank you very much for your patience and um, you know, we really want to thank the audience and the members for their patience. Um, we are, we are, we have a long line of people who are waiting outside who want to be seated. Um, if you folks have been here for a while, there are TVs waiting outside and um, people who are in line are being let in as people leave. So if I could ask for your kukua, if you've been here for a long time, please allow other people to sit in and view the hearings as well. Okay, with that, please proceed. Aloha Chair Rhodes and Luke, representative of the state of Hawaii and the people in the chamber. Uh, apologize if I may speak fast, but there's a lot I wanna say. Uh, my name is Jasmine Thomas, I'm number 3977, and I wholeheartedly support SB1. Uh, there's not much at this point that I can say that hasn't already been said. However, I do wanna share excerpts from a speech made in 1970 by brother Huey P. Newton, one of the founding members of the original Black, Party, Pe Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. We must relate to the homosexual movement because it is a real thing. And I know through reading and through my life experience and observations that homosexuals are not given freedom and liberty by anyone in society. They may be the most oppressed people in society. We must gain security in ourselves and therefore have respect and feelings for all oppressed people. We must not use the racist attitude that the white racists use against our people because they are black and poor. Many times the poorest white person is the most racist because he is afraid that he might lose something or discover something that he does not have. So you're some kind of threat to him. This kind of psychology and operation, when we view oppressed people and when we are angry with them because of their particular kind of behavior or particular kind of deviation from the established norm. I know many have, I know many have wondered and maybe not have said aloud, um, why, why is the proposition outnumbered? Why aren't they here? Tell me, would you come to a place where people called you unnatural and immoral, where they didn't think you were human or worthy enough of the freedom of life? I didn't think so. This is my third day attending hearings. I've been saddened by so many children who parrot to the insecurities of their parents. This bill is not about sex education, school teachings. It's not, it's not about the fear of raising children in non-traditional families. It's not about stripping away rights for the majority. This bill is about the inclusive act of marriage and discrimination. As I understand it, the goal of the church is to serve the whole community. And as a secular nation, we have created laws to protect against oppressed groups. The church right, and it's because they feel threatened or insecure about a particular group of people who may reside in their community. The religious exemption in SB1 is adequate. If you run a business, the only thing that should matter is the color of people's money, not the color of their skin, the language we speak, and who, certainly not who they love. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, please. Uh, my name is Tepasi Tani Kaliunga, and my number is 3944. And I uh, thank you. Um, the uh, House of Representatives for being here and uh, doing a good job. Uh, I've been here since Monday and coming ever since. Um, I oppose the bill because it goes against um, morals. I know my grandfather wouldn't approve of it, and I'm sure your families, um, the leaders up there, if your grandparents was here, I know they would not agree with this. Father Damien, in the front of the state capitol, doesn't agree with this, but I know we have differences and uh, we're trying to live a life together in this uh, 2013. Um, I know you guys uh, bring up the laws and everything, and um, I'm not a, a law person or anything like that, but I know um, that we can find some kind of a, um, um, some place where we can meet in the middle so we can coexist. I know shooting each other is not the answer. And a law like this, just like in the riots in LA, that when things are not um, done in fairness, people go rioting. And I know that is not the correct ac action, is um, forcing someone to do something. And um, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that uh, we will all figure it out. God bless you guys. Thank you, next up. Hi, my name is Reed, and I strongly oppose SB1. 
My number is 3917. I would like to provide some clarification on the, some of the other side's rationale for supporting this bill, which may be the reason why some of you will be voting yes to this bill. I've heard examples of how same-sex marriage issue today is like the interracial marriage back in history, where so many people were opposed to it, but eventually it was allowed and accepted. I wanted to make a couple of things clear. The interracial marriage issue was between a man and a woman, a black man marrying a white woman or a white man marrying a black woman. Now, if you want to compare apples, the issue as far as I know was never, and I repeat, never, the interracial marriage between a white woman and a black woman or a black man and a white man. So obviously, this is not the same or true comparison. I've also heard several times about gays being a minority group. The representative from Hilo stated a few times of how Congress needs to, be, needs to ensure the equal protection of the minority group. I'm not sure where, when, how, or who made this distinction in regards to gays being a minority group. So I googled types of minority group. There are essentially four types, and there are one, racial, two, ethnic, three, gender, and four, religion. As for the life of me, I could not determine which of these types of minority group gays would fall under. But the most compelling thing for me was the characteristics of a minority group. And one of the characteristics is involuntary membership in a group, no personal choice. So how then can we consider gays to be a, called a minority group when it is by their choice that they choose to be gay? We, the Christian community, and non-Christians too, have always valued the sacredness of marriage, a marriage between one man and one woman, and he has withstood the passage of time. So why would you want to change and diminish something so sacred just to appease a group of people by choice, choose voluntary membership in a group by their own personal choice, which is contrary to a minority group, which is Thank which you. is an involuntary membership Thank you. in the group, no personal choice. Next up. Good evening. My name is Abel Malza. My number is 3903. Thank you all, members of the House of Representatives, for allowing us to have and to be a part of the legislative process. This is my third day here because I wanted to have the opportunity in front of the House of Representatives to be able to speak what I think is important for me and my family. I'm a Native Hawaiian and I've seen many changes in my life and I expect to see many more. But the change that we're talking about right now changes history of 2,000 years. Why must it be done in a matter of days? Why the rush? I'm opposed to SB1 for religious grounds, but I also oppose this bill because the manner in which we are pushing through this special session. I would think that with the number of people willing to testify, it would be clear to everyone in the room that this is an important issue, important issue for both sides, for all of us. We are people who are mostly attached to both sides of the aisle. I am encouraged that you've taken the time to listen to us, but I question the need for the special session. The question is, have you truly taken the time to study the issue from all sides? Have you had the time to deliberate between each other? Have you had the time to consider the effects this will have on individuals, on our community, and our loved ones in particular. This is not a decision for the people in the room. It's for generations to come. We are going to affect the lives of my grandchildren and their children. You may have heard us. I hope you're listening. You represent us. Please do it well. My hope is at the end of the day, you will decide to allow the people to vote on this incredibly complex and passionate issue. Allow the entire state to have a decision in this issue. I plead with you to vote no and bring these people in front of the entire state. Mahalo. Thank you, next up. Aloha, my name is Grace Miyamoto and my number is 3988. I am a mother, a grandmother, and have been teaching for the YDOE for almost 30 years. I'm here today in opposition of SB1. 
I believe in traditional marriage, one man and one woman. I'm grateful for those, these values from my parents, grandparents, and ancestors. Today, I stand here as an elementary school teacher. Daily in the classroom, good literature is read to children. From books, children learn about the world around us, learn life lessons, and the beauty of language. One unit of study we've covered over the past few years is Cinderella. We learned that Cinderella stories were written throughout the centuries in cultures and ar from around the world. Always at the end, the prince marries the princess, or the maiden marries a magistrate, a ma male marries a female. Should SB1 pass, what will happen when the day comes when there is a book where a prince marries a prince or a princess marries a princess? Will I be required to teach such a book? If I don't agree with such a relationship of the characters and re refuse to read it, will I be looked down upon or be penalized? I should have the right to say no. To me, the traditional family is the foundation of a strong society. My heart tells me that marriage should not be de redefined. It has worked for most people in the past and in the present. The negative consequences for the, will be great for our children. Please listen to your heart and vote no to SB1 for our future. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Aloha, representatives. My name is Legrand Gu, and number 3983. I'm a taxpayer and a registered voter. I was born and raised in the North Shore of Oahu, and I'm currently live in Waipio. And I strongly oppose Senate Bill 1. I'm here as a husband to a beautiful wife, and a father to two children and one on the way. Like others, this is my first time testifying here at the Capitol for a political reason, and I think that shows that we're here as the Hawaii, people of Hawaii to show our concern for this issue. I'm going to share some points that probably already been covered, but they're important to me as a father and a husband. I don't like that this bill is being rushed. This is an important issue that needs more time to be discussed and researched and get more input from the people of Hawaii. This bill, if passed, will have an everlasting effect on Hawaii. Our children will be affected by this bill. The same things that happen in Massachusetts will happen in Hawaii. Homosexuality and sex education will be taught to my children from a young age, and I will have no control over that. I will lose my right as a parent to have a say as to what curriculum will be taught to my children in school. SB1 um, does not protect religious freedoms that I now have. If this bill passes, I will be seen as a homophobe, a bigot, and ignorant because of my faith and, and support for traditional marriage between a man and a woman. It does not provide enough religious protection for churches and their facilities, and also for small business owners who will be forced to be a part of something that, they, that goes against their faith and belief. If SB1 is passed, it will only cause more division between opponents and proponents of the bill because, because it does not provide sufficient protections for those that oppose same-sex marriage. It will give rights to one group while taking away rights from another. If we change the definition of marriage, it will affect the people of Hawaii and our freedoms. There are many flaws in Senate Bill 1 and many questions that are unanswered. I ask you, House Representatives, to vote no to this bill and think of the people of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Aloha, my name is Jerome Noeau Kikua Mo'o Pono O Mala Maloma Mekalai Ha'o. My number is 3891. I am first and foremost a child of a loving Heavenly Father, as are we all. I am a native Hawaiian. I am a father to three wonderful children and a husband to my beautiful wife of almost six years. I want to start, you by, ask, uh, start by asking you a question. Would you support a bill legalizing polygamy, legalizing incest, legalizing polygamous incest, legalizing a polygamous incestuous marriage. Would you support a bill legalizing sexual relations between an adult grandfather and a granddaughter, or an adult grandfather and a grandson? Would you support a bill legalizing sexual relations between an adult grandfather and, an, uh, and any family member or giving rights and normalizing sexual relations and marriage between a grandfather, his son, and his grandson if they were all consenting adult U.S. citizens? Would you support it being forced into the schools and taught to your children as normal and natural? Probably not. I oppose SB1 based on my morals and values. I believe in God and know that he exists from personal intimate experiences. I know that as we follow and try to live our best to live in accordance with his teachings, that we will be blessed and we will find happiness despite whatever trials we face in this mortal experience. 
This is the basis and foundation of my beliefs, my morals, and my values. My morals are but a single thread in the moral fabric of society which we all contribute to. Our rights and laws stand on this ever-deteriorating fabric. As a nation, we continue to push God out of our government and society and lose the foundation of morals and values upholding our rights and law. We are a nation founded upon Christian principles and the belief in God. The important decisions we make are based on our morals and values, whatever they may be. This is not an equal rights issue. They have the same rights as all of us and can marry any man or woman respectively of their choosing. This is a moral issue affecting all of us in all facets of life. If this bill passes with all its unknowns, I know I am not the only one who may be forced to leave Ku'uoneha now and move somewhere that I know my rights are upheld. There is a direct relationship between the moral decay of the people and the corruption and collapse of their government. We need men and women who possess the rare combination of incorruptible... Okay. Thank you very much. Mahalo for your time. Thank you. Okay, please come up. Uh, Christopher Yanawaria, 3909. Uh, Aloha Chair Rep. Carl Rhodes and uh, Committee of the Judici Judiciary. Chair Rep. Uh, Sylvia Luke um, and the Committee on Finance. Um, I'm a young adult, and born and raised on Maui. Uh, now I live here on uh, Oahu, and I strongly oppose SB1. Um, in the end, uh, my argument ha doesn't have to do with uh, homosexuality. Um, I do not have a religious or theological argument against homosexuality, and I don't think ill of same-sex attra uh, same attracted people. And for anyone that really knows me and uh, knows that, hopefully knows that I'm a thoughtful and kind person. Uh, but the central debate is to understand what is marriage and what, what it is not. Um, and to highlighting, being able to highlight the goodness of what traditional marriage brings to our society. Uh, marriage has traditionally been defined as a union between one man and one woman, fundamentally ordered to procreate and thus share in family life and in a committed and exclusive relationship. Marriage has always been the best means of raising and caring for healthy and happy children. Uh, having a uh, having biological mother and father because of their health, be, having a biological mother and father because of their complementary way of parenting is the ideal situation for a child to grow up and become productive adults, which allows society to flourish. This reality is that children need a mother and father. In a brief uh, that was submitted to the Supreme Court, um, which was submitted by social science professors. Uh, in, says, uh, it is not simply the presence of two parents, but the presence of two biological parents that seem to support children's development. Experts have a long time contended that both mothers and fathers make unique contributions to parenting. And uh, my time's running out, but I urge you to please oppose SB1. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Aloha. Before I, I start, could I just say if we could please continue to pray for Trustee Colette Machado, who is in ICU at Queens Medical Center. Aloha. My name is Tracy Howe. My number is 3925. I'm from Molokai. I was here on Monday. I went home, came back again, and I stand here today in, in opposition to SB1. Um, I'm a nurse for uh, special ed kids in our public schools. And as a health care provider, my focus and concern today is regarding our children. Um, uh, the question is, is this in fact the best interest of our children? I heard testimony from a doctor or psychologist yesterday from Manoa, and basically she said that, um, you know, according to research, children of homosexual parents will not be affected. Well, I beg to differ, and I also would like to say, don't you think we need a second opinion? Um, um, I do have experience. I may not be a doctor, but I'm a mother of four children, a grandmother of five. My daughter, Pili, is here, my youngest, 15, and my, my third, Mo'opuna, Mo'ani Le'ala, and we are three generations. There are four generations still alive here on, in um, Hawaii, and I'd like to share some um, um, information with you by Dr. Tracy Hansen, a clinical psychologist, that although she says, although same-sex marriage may be in the best interest of adult homosexuals, it's not in the best interest of our children. Um, that fundamental differences help to explain why mothers and fathers bring unique characteristics to parenting that cannot be replicated by the other sex. Mothers and fathers simply aren't interchangeable. Although two mothers 
two women might be good mothers, but neither can be a good father. Same with two men being good fathers, but who would be a good mother? Um, you know, think about our children. Um, other um, information she has in her studies say that homosexually parented children are more likely to experiment sexually, experience sexual confusion, and engage in homosexual and bisexual behavior. What kind of doors are we opening for our children? And what, what is next? Uh, polygamous marriages or uh, marital grouping? You know, what kind of doors are we opening here in our future? Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you state your number again? Sorry about that. 3925. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Libaoya. My number is 3967. And I'm here today in strong support of Senate Bill 1. I was born and raised in Hawaii on the island of Maui. I identify as bisexual, and I am Native Hawaiian. The choice of love, the promise of commitment, honor, and for better and for worse should be of an equal privilege between same-sex same couples as it is with heterosexual couples. I stand today with all my LGBT brothers and sisters, for our children, and for our communities. The state motto flies in front of this capital and represents what our state stands on and values. The life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. In the end, we are all one. We are one human race. We are one ohana. All we want as LGBT is to be respected and to be treated equally. Fears have become surmountable because of this bill and the perceived unknown threats. We as LGBT live with fear every day. Fear that our relationships are not validated. Fears that we won't be able to support our families at home and in everyday life in terms of benefits in relation to property, finances, and health. Fear that we'll be ridiculed with another gay joke or worse yet bullied even to death. This bill reinforces compassion, love, and acceptance, the values of our state. Passing this bill to allow for marriage equality for all of Hawaii's families would be pono. Now is the time to be pono. Now is the time for marriage equality, and Senate Bill 1 will provide all of us just that. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Next up. Aloha. My name is Amy Rose Craig, and I'm number 3845. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Hawaii at Manoa and currently a master's candidate at Chaminade University. I teach special education in the public high school. I'm a Hawaii resident, and I've been registered to vote since I was 18, voting in every election held since then. First, I would like to mention personally my new friend Laura, who just spoke. Uh, I also have family members in the LGBT community. I have an HIV-positive uncle who passed away. I'd like to express my compassion and my empathy. Additionally, I'd like to say that I'm not opposed to legislation that supports the rights and the freedoms being protected of the LGBT community. I am, however, opposed to the eight-letter word marriage being used. Uh, I have friends who are transgendered and engaged, and I support them. Personally, I'm opposed to this bill, but I am not opposed to protections for the people in our communities and for the people in our state. I believe that these things should be looked at and taken the time over to be deliberated properly. I believe we can do better than this. And I believe that we need to make sure that everyone is taken into account. Mahalo. Thank you. Next, please come up. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Karis Logan. My number is 3913. I would like to respectfully oppose this bill. As I have read over SB1, I have found a few areas that have not sat well with me. But because so many of my concerns have already been addressed, I would like to just focus on one. I was appalled to read in section eight that, and I quote, there are many individuals who have significant emotional and economic relationships with another individual, yet are prohibited from legal restrictions 
by legal restrictions from marrying. Therefore, the legislature believes that certain rights and benefits presently available only to married couples should be made available to couples comprised of two individuals who are legally prohibited from marrying one another. The example given was a widowed mother, which contradicted an earlier section which deemed that as a gender-specific word, and her unmarried son. At this point, marriage is completely changed as we know it. At this point, is there any basis to keep individuals from marrying, no matter how detrimental to the good of our society? Yes, I believe that a widowed mother should be taken care of. However, I do not believe that this is the best solution to areas of concern, whether economic or personal. As a layperson, I may be misinterpreting this part in the bill, but even if I am, I feel that because it leaves room for open interpretation, it leaves room for error. I respectfully ask you to consider the areas in this bill that seemed ambiguous and undefinable even by our Attorney General. Why are we going to pass a law at this time that leaves us with unanswered and unclear answers that was repeatedly deferred to our court system. I'm not against giving rights to same gender couples, but would ask that you please not pass this faulty bill or that you would at least make amendments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I take the next row of testifiers and if the last row could stick around for questions? Thank you very much. Please step up. You can go ahead. Walina, my name is Phil Beyer. I am number 3997, a citizen of God's kingdom and a citizen of the state of Hawaii for the past 80 days. I'm the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Good Shepherd Preschool in Liliha, and the four congregations of Makamurai Ministries. And I must share with you with all great love, respect, and compassion, I'm not sure I've ever felt so much sadness in a room until this evening. I look upon a group of people that God has created and given such enormous talent and skill that it seems to be... Uh, somewhat thrown under the bus, as they used to say back in my days in Detroit, Michigan. I come tonight, I've submitted my written op opposition to SB1, and I oppose SB1 due to the government's attempt to restrict its citizens and religious groups from their right to freedom of speech and worship practices by attempting to restrict their services to members only. I oppose SB1 also because the, the government's lack of intent and language in protecting a citizen's right to hold a conscience. As I look upon uh, brothers and sisters of the human race tonight, uh, let the joy of the Lord be your strength, as the word of God says. That means being true to yourself. And I wish to spend just a moment to give you a few positive moments in my life of the last 80 days that I've been here on the island of Oahu. I want to thank the junior representative Ono and the colleagues for my 80 days of peace regarding the issues that we are confronted with. I've been able to celebrate the accomplishments of the students of Lanakila Elementary School, provide education to the young, attend religious meetings, a community club meetings, spend my money along Liliha Street and School Road, and never once felt imposed that I was violating my conscience. God bless, I don't want SB1 to be passed in hopes that the government Thank comes you. up with a better idea. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please come up. Aloha, Chair Luke Aloha. and Chair Rhodes. I'm Fritz Rolfing. I am number 3,887. I'm, I'm an attorney in private practice. I was a member of the Commission on Sexual Orientation created by Act 217 of the 1994 Hawaii Session Laws. That act, uh, that commission was superseded by the commission created by Act 5 of the 1995 Hawaii, State, uh, Hawaii Session Laws. I'm opposed to SB 1. First, I uh, 
point your committee to section eight uh, regarding uh, amendments to the reciprocal beneficiaries law. I, I did have a hand in preparing an initial draft of that, that law some uh, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, but uh, the findings of the legislature are being stricken in this bill. The findings are the legislature finds that the people of Hawaii choose to preserve the tradition of marriage as a unique social institution based upon the committed union of one man and one woman. The legislature further finds that because of its unique status, marriage provides access to a multiplicity of rights and benefits throughout our laws that are contingent upon that status. As such, marriage should be subject to restrictions such as prohibiting respective parties to a valid marriage contract from standing in relation to each other. In essence, brother and sister of the half as well as to the whole blood, uncle and niece, aunt and nephew. Um, there's no, there's been no presentation of any justification in the findings uh, initially in this bill. Why this language should be stricken? I think this this language fits in the common understanding of the people of Hawaii, and I have yet to see a reason why it should be stricken. So I urge you to vote no on SB one. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Donald McNeely, and my number is 3945. I won't bore you with a lot of uh, details because I know you've probably all heard a lot, and very, everyone is very tired, so I'll just pick out one uh, thing that I really um, want to share with everybody. I heard a testimony that said that Homosexuality and lesbianism is something that is um, born into a person. And a lot of us here, agree, some of them agree and some of them disagree. Well, let's turn to Romans 1, which has been read earlier today, and see what this has to say, God's Word, the infallible Word of God. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed creatures, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their w women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of their women. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Good evening. My name is Gail Sumner, and my number is 3858. I attend Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship in Waihawa. I represent our congregation's opposition to SB1. We are against same-sex marriage because God is opposed to it. Changing the definition of marriage to include individuals of the same sex will greatly weaken the family unit and will bring unrest in the core of the soul of many who choose that lifestyle. I want to share on the effects of homosexuality on the soul Studies have shown that these individuals have sexual identity struggles and feelings of attraction of the same sex because of unmet emotional needs, feelings of rejection from their father and mother, feelings of abandonment, being teased, 
I read a testimony of John and Ann Polk who believe they develop homosexual tendencies because of pornography. John was attracted to the male body because he longed for his father's love. Many others were molested by the same sex or were touched inappropriately, and this creates an inner conflict and unnatural desires. Allowing same-sex marriage will only complicate matters for many that are searching for identity. Many need help and do not need to be pushed into a homosexual lifestyle by society and be told that marriage is an option. I have a friend, Teresa Septrin, who lived a homosexual lifestyle for 25 years and had deep feelings inside of her where there was no peace and wanted to change but didn't know how. One day she was watching TV and a preacher was um, praying for lesbians and she was touched. She realized that her attraction for women was because she was searching for a mother's love. Her mother was sickly and could not take care of her. In closing, I strongly oppose this bill because same-sex marriage is unnatural and will bring more confusion to our keikis. Peace is a gift from God when we do what is right. Please vote no and, or let the people decide. Thank you. Next up. My number is 343940. Three, um, I oppose SB1. Good day, with respect. For this same reason, a man sold his soul and his friend for 30 pieces of silver. Every yes vote, sell your soul for a penny. For every yes vote, cheapens the value of marriage. The body dies, but the soul lives on, even in remembering the errors made in this life while in hell. If you do not turn to this divine, divine guidance as stated in our state constitution, then he will ask you why you sold your soul for a penny. Today is history. This penny has no value, this penny. But every yes vote is going to change this penny that was left on the street, ugly and discarded. But the value of each vote will make it priceless. Every yes vote from that panel, as I already dropped off five of them to the first panel, that oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> that agreed to this uh, bill. And um, I have one more for the governor. But again, on my soul, to you. Do you let these individuals take you to hell? Then they, they will be smarter than you. I oppose SB1. Okay, next up. Three eight nine five. My name is Travis Augustine, and I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of Hawaii. I'm here to testify in opposition to the current version of SB1. There are collateral issues that it does not address. I'm requesting that the representatives adequately discuss how these issues will be addressed if SB1 becomes law and refine the language to protect individuals. Is SB1 really about marriage equality or marriage equity? On his face, SB1 appears to simply grant same-sex couples the opportunity to enter into a marriage contract. However, the discussion does not end there. If SB1 becomes law, the governor and the supporters of SB1 will seek to achieve marriage equality by implementing an aggressive public policy to change the cultural norms of Hawaii. This process is known as marriage equity. Marriage equity is a process by which the advancement of the issue will come at the expense of others individual rights to respectfully disagree with the issue. The governor has publicly expressed that SB1 is about marriage equity. <clears throat> My concern is that without adequate parameters, pursuing a policy of marriage equity will come at the expense of violating the constitutional rights of Hawaii citizens. The bottom line is that SB1 does not protect an individual's right to respectfully disagree with same-sex marriage. And my fear is that an individual will be unable to freely express their beliefs concerning this issue without facing criminal or civil charges. 
due to the public policy associated with SB1. For example, SB1 only provides a limited exemption, and SB1 does not protect the beliefs held by individuals belonging to those organizations or the contents of those religious organizations' teachings. This also goes beyond religious beliefs because there are individuals who respectfully disagree for a number of other reasons, like moral conscience. My bottom line is that the current version of SB1 does not address everyone's rights on this issue. Although everyone should have equal access and opportunity, at the same time, individuals should be entitled to respectfully express and hold their respective views without the fear of punishment. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. My name is Darren Araki. My number is 3807. I'm here in opposition to SB1. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Yesterday, Justice Levinson made it clear that the legislative intent behind the Con Am of 98 was to grant the power to the legislature to define marriage. Now, here's what I see as the problem. Although the legislature was crystal clear on its intent, that clarity did not get accurately conveyed in the question on the constitutional amendment. The people of Hawaii thought the issue of same-sex marriage was settled back then, only to find out now that the power we vested into the legislature is being used differently from what we thought we agreed to. What you're hearing from many testifiers is that because there's so much disagreement and confusion about this, give the people of Hawaii an opportunity to tell you once and for all whether we want same-sex marriage legalized or not. One of the concerns I've heard against allowing the people of Hawaii to vote on this issue is the idea of tyranny of the majority that through the democratic process, the majority will be able to oppress the minority. Well, here's some numbers for your consideration. Hawaii United for Marriage states on their website that a statewide poll shows 54% in support of marriage equality. In a release by Equality Hawaii Foundation in January 28th of this year, 55% of Hawaii registered voters are in favor as well. And the only reason why I bring these numbers up to you is because I think it shows that there's a safeguard against the majority oppressing the minority in this issue, especially during a popular vote, because according to these polls, the opposition is in the minority. I'm asking that you please vote no to SB1 and give the vote back to the people so that we can decide. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, please come up. Aloha, chairs, members, and representatives. My name is Min Ning Pan. I think that my number is 3A3A. I oppose SB1. I came to Hawaii as a foreign student, and now I am a plow American. I love this country because the traditional American value the goodless and righteousness endured by American people. I believe that's the foundation of democracy and that's what made this country great. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. As a PhD in economics, a professional researcher in economics impact analysis, I want to point out a simple concept in economics impact analysis. While we counting the possible increase of wedding because gay marriage is allowed, we need to also count the possible decrease of wedding, land wedding tourists, foreign students because gay marriage is allowed. Based on a conservative estimation, a direct revenue loss is 234 million if gay marriage is allowed in Hawaii. The loss is four times higher than the gain presented on Thursday, a study presented here by UH. Dear representative, what you decide today had great impact today and tomorrow. I urge you to think deep why 
and okay, wine. Thank you. I urge you to okay, wait. Thank no. you very much. To Next up. Okay, SB1. thank you very much. Next. My name is Renee Hewilmore. My number is 3975. I'm opposed to the special session, same-sex marriage. I've written a poem about keikis. Keikis have played in waves of values. Keikis have dived in waves of values. Keikis have surfed on waves of values. If this spill passes, the waters will recede. The coral will be exposed and a tidal wave of unintentional wrongs will devastate the values that once protected and kept safe the keikis of Hawaii. I am really concerned about the special session on same-sex marriage because it fails to respect the democratic process. Democracy is not a disposable attitude of shortcuts. This is one of the most important issues of our times and it has not been heard by a new generation of people because the same-sex marriage issue has not been discussed at length by the legislature since 1998. There seems to be undue pressure on this bill to bully it into law. Why haven't 34 other states called a special session on same-sex marriage? No other state legislature has approved the same-sex marriage in five days. There wasn't a supermajority vote to make the special session valid. The governor did not consult the legislature on choosing the dates for the special session. Why is this so urgent? This is not democracy. This is a fixed un outcome that excludes people's input from the equation. Hawaii is very unique from other states in, in, in its culture and ethnic diversities. To overlook these considerations can lead to unhealthy and detrimental outcomes that will affect Hawaii's people and Hawaii's keikis for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. My name is Ben H. Pokipala, Jr. My number is 3862. My strong opposition to SB1 does not lessen my love and respect one by one iota for those who would believe differently from me. I believe that this is just the wrong time and the wrong way to achieve the goals of those who support SB1. More time is needed to address this bill correctly. Senator Brian Taniguchi's response to my recent email was, Mr. Pokipala, I believe I am elected to represent my constituents as best as, as I can. I do not believe I must always vote according to what is perceived as what the majority wants. For example, I have always been opposed to the death penalty, but I believe that a majority would probably support it. In cases of civil rights, which I think this is, it is not pono to only rely on a majority popular vote to provide justice. The whole civil rights movement of the black Americans is an example of this. My response to Mr. Taniguchi, you need to resign. Yes, I do believe that you need to represent the majority of your constituents. You are not elected to represent your individual sentiments. You are elected to represent the people, your constituents. If you cannot do this, resign and find someone who can represent your positions that you can nominate, elect, and cast your vote for. You are making judgments about your constituents that they do not know what is pono or right for themselves and their family. That you as their senator know better. This is an insult. And yes, I do choose to take offense at your high and mighty all-knowing position on this issue. I do expect that you are documenting all of your contacts, whether by email, phone call, or in person, to validate that your vote is a reflection of the majority of your constituents who, yes, do know what is Pono and right for themselves and their family. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, please. Hello, my name is Evelyn Chow and my number is 3942. I stand here before you today as a youth council member of the GSA of Hawaii and as the president and founder 
of the GSA club at my school in strong support of Senate Bill 1. I've been watching the testimonies on my television since Monday, and I've heard many different variations of arguments against same-sex marriage, one of which was that it would hurt our younger generation. But the thing is, the only thing that would be hurting our younger generation right now is being on the wrong side of history. I believe that everybody is entitled to his or her own opinion, but those opinions do not have the right to oppress me or the LGBTQ community. And this is more than just a bill to me and to so many other people. This is about equality. And equality is something I find extremely crucial to support. This is about the right to hold my girlfriend's hand when I walk down the street without getting any rude remarks or condescending stares. This is about the right to marry the woman that I love one day when the day comes. And this is about the right to be there in that hospital room with her years from now when visiting hours are for family members only. I want to know that they'll be able to let me in. Please don't take away that right from me or from anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Three nine seven nine. My name is Leah Loha Benson, and I oppose SB one. Um, there are many tenants of SB one that I oppose, and much of it has been heard in the last week or so. And so I'm going to talk to just really one topic, and that's the topic of identity. Identity in relation to ethnicity and identity in relation to gender, not necessarily identity in relation to heterosexual or homosexual sorry, or, um, sexual orientation. Um, in, if, if passed, this bill could alter the way that we document ethnicity on our birth certificates for those children born to same-sex marriages. And it's really important to me that ethnicity is truthfully documented according to the biological uh, DNA of that child. And it's important because of the identity construction for that child from birth through adulthood. Because as we know, ethnicity means a lot to us in Hawaii. And so that part of it is very important to me. The second part of the birth certificate uh, reservation I have is in regard to uh, how we're going to know for those uh, agencies who do use ethnicity, and I'm not just talking about Native Hawaiian agencies, um, like from the legacy of Hawaii or Lili'u, but other um, ethnicities like Filipino and Samoan and other um, ethnicities who have scholarships and things who, and who count on the true biological ethnicities of their, these children and growing into adulthood, how that might reflect on the funding to those such programs. And I don't think that's fully covered in this bill. Um, another thought process is in relation to the idea of gender neutral forms and language relating to those forms and how that might uh, psychologically impact our youth as they grow up in a gender neutral society. And I know there's a lot, of, there could be implications for that. I don't know if they're good or bad, but just not knowing is enough to, to stop the bill where it is and find out so that we know that the best decisions that we're making is for the greatest good impact for our, for our society and not just for a few people. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Members, we're going to take some questions at this point. Questions? Representative Farr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can I please have Mr. Rolfing up? Good evening, Mr. Rolfing. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for your testimony. Good evening, Representative Farr. Okay, Parr. I thank was you. very intrigued by your testimony because you are the first person to talk about this section. Page 12 of the bill, lines 15 through uh, page 13, lines 3. Can we, I, I, I mean, you just talked about it being stricken, but I'm not really clear on what you were, what you're, what you were getting at with respect to the actual effect of it being stricken. Well, the, what the bill is doing is it's striking this, this as a legislative finding. And it's also troublesome that this striking, the, this finding <coughs> regarding, uh, as an example of restrictions, uh, the restriction on uh, valid marriage contracts to, do not allow a brother and sister to marry. <coughs> and then you, if you go back to uh, page seven of the bill, and there's a, a additional uh, modification of the degree of relation in which people stand 
to each other. So you, you're, you're, you're striking a finding on uh, relationships, uh, the nearness of family relationships, and now you're, you're modifying this because now gender is not a factor in, in a marriage. And what I am concerned about is I don't see how this new language can stand even a rational basis test challenge under the equal protection laws. If a brother and a brother want to get married and they are denied a license, what rational basis is there for that distinction to be made? And if they succeed in that challenge to the law, then what is left of saying, how can you then say, but a brother and sister cannot get married, if the brother and brother can get married because there's no rational basis for the distinction. So I think you are treading in, you're treading on thin ice because you are starting to obliterate certain distinctions that have, have, uh, have uh, you know, held up over the test of time and you're doing this in kind of a haphazard way. Okay, um, let's take a step back. You testified in the beginning of your uh, testimony that you had sat on a commission, and I'm sorry, I, I just missed, lost your testimony. What number were you again, Mr. Rolfing? I apologize. I'm 3887. 3887. If I remember correctly. Okay, so what was the, what was this, this organization, you said that you were a member of some commission? Right, Act uh, 217 set up a commission on sexual orientation to uh, examine um, the marriage laws and, and determine what type of, uh, whether, whether changes needed to be made. We, we got started and then, uh, 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 then a lawsuit intervened regarding uh, the makeup of the commission and the legislature re, uh, reconfigured the commission and so I, I did not go on to the, the new commission. Okay, so when you were a member of this commission on sexual orientation created by Act 217, did you in fact participate in that group? Oh, I did. And, and let me just point out that, that Section 6 of Act 217, our task, the purpose of the commission was to, to examine the precise legal and economic benefits extended to opposite sex couples, but not to same sex couples, examine whether substantial public policy reasons exist to extend such benefits, and recommend appropriate action. So we, we, uh, we embarked, but we were not able to complete our work. Okay, so there was no actual report that emanated from that particular task force. That's correct. Okay, so um, now getting back to this language. Um, I mean, I too have some concerns. I mean, I think that I understand what the intent is, but I also understand we talk about unintended consequences. And I agree with you that with respect to striking out in, in an attempt to be gender neutral, we are now actually condoning relationships. And I think um, and a lot of opponents say, oh, well, you know, this could in fact lead to polygamy or incestual relationships, and proponents roll their eyes and say, that's ridiculous, that's not what we're about. And I, right, this I, I don't slippery disagree slope with that. argument. But what I'm right. concerned with right now is the actual wording of this bill. I think that if you actually read this bill literally, it does condone those types of relationships. Well, it, 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 does, it weakens the basis to, to uh, argue in court. Uh, which is where I spend a lot of my life against somebody who is challenging this. So uh, it doesn't say it's okay, but you, you've lost some of your, your uh, mojo if, or whatever, you know, uh, ability to refute and, and stand on what has come in the past. So what would your suggestion be, you, as an attorney, Mr. Wilson, what would your suggestion be with respect to this section? <coughs> Because actually, if you go down on page 13 and go down to lines 4 through 10, I think those lines are actually unnecessary as well. If we're going to strike out lines 15 through 3 I, on page 13, I'm, I'm even confused with, with the additional language that follows. Uh, well, With respect to the example. Yeah, I... You know, again, this is language that was explaining why we were doing, we were going to a reciprocal beneficiaries relationship, and what the legislature was trying to do at that time. And and I, I did get involved in preparing an initial draft for the uh, judiciary chair at that time, which he you know he modified and uh, went through uh, through the legislature. But the the idea was that in 
rather than having the legislature decide, are we going to uh, give uh, give approval to same-sex relationships or not? What we what I understood this bill to be trying to do was to say there are other relationships in the society besides marital relationships, the, the common definition of marriage being one man and one woman. And we want to allow people in those uh, relationships to have benefits. Okay, this is because this is amending Chapter 572, which is the RB section of the Correct. statute. Correct. Ms. Young had testified earlier that this should not be the section of the statute that should be amended. She said it should be the Chapter 584, I believe. Right. Okay. Okay, right. that makes sense then. Yeah. Okay, can we, did you, have you read the entire bill, Mr. Wilson? I have, uh, okay, Representative Okay, can we Farm. go on to, again, we've been talking about religious exemptions for three days now. <laughs> Um, can I ask you, um, have you heard some of the debate? Have you heard what um, the Attorney General, you know, admitted that the religious exemption applies only to uh, solemnization? Then yesterday we had Judge uh, Elwin Ahu who essentially talked about public accommodations because it's silent in this bill. It still is a factor. It's still an issue and it would probably be litigated. Yes, I, I would agree with uh, okay, uh, Judge so, Ahu. So what would, you, what would your recommendation be in order to beef up these First Amendment protections? Well, I, I, think, I think we first have to recognize uh, what, what's going on. If, when, you, when you pass, uh, when you uh, redefine marriage to include what I call a single sex option, it's people of the same gender, um, you, you have changed, you know, you have changed a social institution. Uh, you, you've done, you've taken a huge step and and uh, marriage being one of the oldest and most widely respected types of preferred, specially protected relations. So you, you now have given a new status to a certain type of relationship that for many years was, was uh, not favored and for, since the 1970s for Hawaii um, has not been prohibited by law uh, because we passed the model penal code. But once you, once you give a, that's, that status to uh, that that relationship is very difficult to carve out and, and protect people who disagree and, and disagree emphatically. But I would I would say that what what's here in terms of the religious protection language, pardon the expression, it's just a fig leaf. It's it's not it's threadbare, and it needs to be far far more robust to protect what seems to me to be a lot of uh, well-meaning and well-intentioned people from being caught up in the, in the machinery of civil rights enforcement and the educational establishment once you have given the, the stamp of approval by the state of, of uh, a certain type of relationship that is, that is I guess, subject to dispute as, as to how, uh, how socially beneficial it is. Okay, so in looking at this bill as an attorney, um, do you, as the bill, if it was to be passed as is, with no amendments, um, with respect to this public accommodations issue that continues to be out there because it's silent in the bill, um, in your legal opinion, would there be possibility, there would there be possible challenges to some of our faith-based organizations based on their role in our communities, et cetera, as a public accommodation? Ab absolutely. Uh, the, the bill seems to, you know, I guess understandably, the, the first thing people think of is our church is going to be required to solemnize same-sex marriages, and that is, is ex you know, it, there is an exemption or, or protection in the bill. But churches are so integrated into the community in terms of providing charitable services and and uh, uh, halls for wedding celebrations and and educational uh, work and uh, adoption agencies and all those activities by churches are going to be uh, churches and faith-based organizations are going to be impacted because as soon as they start drawing distinctions between uh, same-sex couples and and uh, opposite-sex couples they're going to be subject to civil rights, uh, civil rights prosecution. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rothman. Thank, thank you, you, Representative Carroll. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Chair. Representative Jordan, followed by Ward. 
Okay, you see, stay please. Um, listening to that, there's also been some conversation in the last couple of days regarding the exemption that um, Connecticut uses. Do you have any knowledge of what that exemption may be? I, I'm, I'm basically familiar with the Connecticut uh, language. It's far more extensive than the language in Senate Bill 1 in terms of uh, protecting religious, uh, religious freedoms. Okay, so uh, would that be usable here or do you think that wouldn't be usable in this state? Well, I, I, think, it, I think it's, uh, it, it's an alternative that, that uh, should be g given careful consideration. I think it, even the Connecticut uh, statute doesn't go far enough in protecting individuals. Um, it's mostly uh, oriented toward protecting entities, uh, religious organizations, uh, faith-based organizations. Um, and then there, there are individuals who for personal reasons uh, would like to opt out of uh, participating in, in certain uh, activities such as, as wedding photography, wedding cakes, you know, these types of, of things. And I think the language in the Connecticut uh, statute could be expanded to protect, uh, you know, small businesses of five people or less. Uh, so I think that would be helpful as well. Okay. Well, my understanding is, I was, I was trying to understand the Attorney General the other day and then several other people that have, you know, tried to make comments on this. I've been trying to research this Connecticut, Connecticut exemption. And what I was trying to glean off of some of the other attorneys or the AG was if, I'm sorry, I'm going blank. Um, we have a public accommodation a law here. <laughs> It, we have a public accommodation statute here that if, if that's violated, it goes to a specific, um, you know, department, Mr. Hosijo, and they present a ruling, which could then possibly go to a court, correct? Correct. So we're talking you, about you, hierarchies, you, you right? would appeal the, the Civil Rights Commission's ruling, or there'd be a letter to, a right to sue letter coming, and then, and then the parties would proceed to a okay. court. So when I'm trying to understand this Connecticut exemption, um, I think Connecticut's, Connecticut's is kind of very narrow. And that's only because when you start to go to their hierarchy, they have a stronger constitution than we do here in the state of Hawaii. And I'm only trying to correlate that with because their constitution seems to be even older than the United States Constitution. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to correlate in my brain. Right. You know, when, when I keep hearing the discussion of possibly using the Connecticut exemption, would that even hold up to ours, ours, because I, 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 we don't have a stronger constitution like Connecticut does. Um, I, I don't uh, know the entire uh, Connecticut constitution, so I don't think I could address the, your okay. specific concern, but um, I, I don't see, and I, I think I agree with you that I, I don't think the Connecticut uh, protection is, is uh, substantial enough. I think it's a move in the right direction, but I think it could be improved. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Representative Ward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Rolfing, we have just entered the 38th hour of testimony. Having that hour having arrived, I need to hear street language. <laughs> when you said there's no rational basis, what were you talking about in terms of brothers being marrying brothers in this? It just went right over my head. Yeah, under, under equal protection analysis, uh, under the Constitution, there are various uh, standards that legislation that makes distinctions has to pass constitutional thresholds under the US Constitution. Certain types of, um, of discrimination is, is, you know, are called invidious, such as racial discrimination. And those types of, that type of discrimination is, is uh, held to a, a, a higher standard is applied by a court evaluating whether the statute under attack is uh, a violation of equal protection. And that, uh, when it's, there's a racial uh, classification, the standard is compelling state interest. And you might recall that that was the language used by the Bear Court, because the Bear Court, uh, the Bear versus Lewin State, uh, Hawaii Supreme Court uh, plurality uh, opinion, and is essentially it became the, the guiding opinion, said, um, 
the limitation of marriage to one man and one woman is a classification based on sex. And under our uh, jurisprudence, uh, under our Constitution, because we have an equal protection clause in our Constitution, distinctions made on the basis of gender also have the compelling state interest test applied. In the U.S. Supreme Court is applied in the, in the cases of gender distinctions an intermediate standard, and then for any other distinctions, they apply the rational basis standard, which is simply, and it's usually fairly easy to meet. All you have to show is the distinction you're making has some reasonable basis. And, it, it, and what I'm saying for me to see a reasonable basis once you allow, once you say uh, a male can marry a male, for you to make a distinction and say, but if they're brothers, they cannot marry. Now you have a distinction, and at a minimum, you would have to apply the, the rational basis test and say, what, what purpose is that trying to accomplish? And it's difficult to see what purpose there would be because, uh, as I would understand uh, those restrictions in our, our marriage statutes, the purpose is to pr protect children from a genetic issues that, that come about when, uh, when uh, a male and a female of uh, close relation, uh, you know, have a child. But that, that is a biological impossibility for two brothers. So what is the purpose of making that distinction any further apply in our marriage statute? Well, was your intent to keep that in the legislative finding on the page that you cited with Representative Hart earlier? Was, you, was the notion to keep that finding in this bill? I, th I so think that, that finding would be a good one to keep in the bill. You know, even if you're going you're gonna to knock out the finding, although, again, I think you ought to have a basis as a, as a legislature to, to change legislative findings of previous legislatures and previous acts. I mean, in Act 217, there's a great, there's, there are two pages or three pages of findings by your legis the legislature. You may have been in it, the representative ward at the time. And, uh, and you know, one of the findings is that uh, the Hawaii marriage li uh, licensing statutes were intended to foster and protect the propagation of the human race through male-female marriages. And so that's still, uh, you know, that's still a viable act under Hawaii law, um, you know, perhaps you need to go back and, and strike that language. But I, I would be uh, very concerned, and I would suggest you don't strike the language that says there are some distinctions that we, we can still make, and uh, the, among those are distinctions uh, based on famili you know, f uh, family relationships. Okay. It's still, you still might have the problem, but at least you're not blowing out all of your findings but, but, and, uh, but I think people and leaving the door open. It, it's not going to go beyond men marrying men and women marrying women, but you're saying that it could potentially go beyond that with brothers and brothers if we don't put some understanding or finding within the statute for future consideration by future legislators, et cetera. Right, right. Okay, okay. I right. understand. Now I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Representative Wally. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just, <clears throat> just um, uh, curiosity, um, uh, Mr. Rolfing. If we talked about when when we had the uh, the testimony from the Attorney General, we talked about a number of issues that that had to be left up to the court. Um, if these issues involved a, a small individual or a small business, um, how much would it cost that small individual or that small business to uh, carry through a proceeding that involved? Um, um, litigation in court. Well, lawyers like me don't come cheap, <laughs> and uh, and there's there's there, it's almost a twofold problem. Not only are lawyers expensive, so you need to pay a lawyer to defend you. The, you know the public defender's office is not available to private individuals in civil rights complaints or civil disputes. But as I understand the Civil Rights Commission's policy, they do not consider whether the, the effort they're making to enforce what, what they say are the civil rights laws, they don't consider whether that is a violation, that their very enforcement is a violation of the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, religious freedom. 
they say that's not you can take that up with a court later on but that's not our kuleana and so we're not going to consider it give us your records give us your stuff we're going to go and do an investigation to see if you violated this specific civil rights statute so you can imagine you're going to have to pay to be def to defend in in the civil rights commission that could easily uh, you know be from 20 to 30 to 50 thousand dollars and then at some point you may be able to go to court and argue again pay more money and argue that these civil rights statutes at least as, as they're being applied to you thank you are um, are violate are, are being applied in violation of your religious freedom so it's an expensive process and so it's it's something that uh, the legislature should really take a, a hard look at and be very careful because once you open the floodgates, it's it's going to be very difficult for people to defend themselves. Okay, thank you. No, well, just just um, oh, <coughs> just a follow-up uh, question for that, sir. Are you saying for the, for average regular person, this this would break the back of a private citizen or or a small business if they had to fight this out? I mean, it's easily in the tens of thousands. And so, when the attorney general says we should just ignore some of the flaws and issues that we have in the law and just let the courts decide. I mean, that could be very problematic if the legislature doesn't take a proactive position to resolve a number of these questions and issues that we have. Precisely because you will have people that cannot afford to defend themselves, so they will just uh, comply with the demands, even if the demands are uh, violating their, their religious freedom. Okay, thank you. Um, somebody else? Oh, Representative Kobayashi. Hello. Hi, Representative. Um, I've been reading page seven regarding what you said about the um, degree of relationships between um, parties who want to marry. Um, on page seven, line three, there's the word not. And my reading of this is that um, uh, your reference to brother and brother is stricken by the word not. Uh, I would uh, go ahead. ask that you perhaps um, reread that um, page, uh, including the line three and the word not. Um. Representative Kobayashi, I think I understand this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I understand this paragraph to be saying is essentially the prohibition of people standing in a, uh, a close degree of relationship continues to, they continue to be prohibited from marrying. Is that your understanding of what it says now? Yes, yes. Okay. And so what I, what I am saying is that <clears throat> if this is considered a prohibition of a brother marrying a brother, I question whether it meets the equal protection standard of the rational basis test because I'm, I'm struggling to figure out what is the governmental purpose to restricting a brother from marrying a brother, a sister marrying a sister, I don't, I don't see what, what the basis of that is. And if, if, if you um, have an have a idea of what it is, I would be very interested to hear it. Aren't you speculating that, um, number one, the, um, um, the case would be brought up on the basis of a um, rational basis test? It, it could, it could not. It's possible it would never be brought up, but I suspect given the number of individuals in our society that at some point uh, it would be raised, it would, the Department of Health would be confronted with the issue and it would have to resolve it one way or the other and if it resolved it in the negative, that litigation would ensue. So it's okay. not a guarantee, nothing is a guarantee <laughs> in life, but I think it's, it's a potential uh, issue that could create problems that I, I I suspect the legislature does not want to create. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any other M questions? Mr. Chair. That? Representative McDermott. Hey, Mr. Rolfe, thank you for being here. Thank you, Representative McDermott. Back to the brother and brother. Uh, 
if and I, I'm never, uh, nothing ceases to amaze me anymore. If these two fellows want it, they're both widowers or never married or they're, and they want to avail themselves of certain benefits, retirement or a hospital visits or something of that nature. What, what would our objection be to a situation like that, to two brothers marrying? Well, that, that is kind of the question that I'm asking. And, and the reciprocal beneficiary statute actually was an attempt to, to address that issue, taking the sexuality issues out of the relationship. There might be a need for, for people to have benefits. Whatever the reason was that they, they could not avail themselves of a, the, the man-woman definition, uh, that applied. And so under reciprocal beneficiaries, a brother and a brother could enter into a reciprocal beneficiaries relationship, get these certain benefits. But I do agree, it, it, well, it sounds like and you are suggesting a reason why if, a, if two brothers wanted to gain whatever additional benefits marriage, you know, the term marriage would mean, they, they might want to challenge uh, the statute once it's, you know, once it's changed and um, and gender is no longer a factor, it's hard to see a justification for retaining this restriction on siblings getting married. Thank you, sir. Okay, any other questions? If not, thank you. Okay, Representative, uh, Representative Jordan. Jordan. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm not sure if he can answer this question or not. And I wasn't sure if there was another attorney that testified in your bracket. So I'll just pose this question to you, sir. Could the enactment of this um, bill constitute a material change in the way employers um, provide prepaid health insurance? I'm not sure if you're... you're well, I, I think, at least in, in terms of Hawaii, I would think that employers, as of this moment, before the passage of this bill, are required to provide uh, health insurance to um, civil union partners because, as I understand the civil union law, uh, th those in civil unions have all the rights and benefits of marriage. And so I, would, I wouldn't think there would be a change because I th as long as somebody was in a civil union, right, it would be the same whether they're in a civil union or a marriage because they should be getting the benefits of Hawaii's prepaid health law already. Well, we currently have an exemption to the ERISA. Okay. Is that going to have any play in this? Because I haven't heard it brought up in the last few days. Right. And I think that's a very good question. And, and I, I don't hold myself out as an ERISA lawyer. So okay. I, I think uh, we'll have to have somebody more knowledgeable in that uh, area of uh, employment benefits to answer that question. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? Otherwise, we'll let the testifiers Ma go. Man oh, Madam Chair, oh, uh, have I have some, some. Somebody else? The Chinese economist Ming Ling Pan, I believe her name was. Miss, Miss Ming, Ming Ling. Yeah, please come up. Yes. Thank you uh, for being here and giving us an economic perspective on something that otherwise we are having the author of the LaCroix study, Professor LaCroix himself came here. I was uh, speaking about uh, someone who had a mild stroke last night here and I missed some of your testimony. So if it's repetitive, forgive me uh, in, in asking the question. If you compare your study with Sumner LaCroix study, how do you explain the difference? And if you could explain your methodology, I wasn't able to discern how you arrived at your numbers. Just give us the numbers that you have. Um, the number we got is strictly from the state statistic compared to uh, US mainland visitor come here. Asian people come to Hawaii for holiday uh, honeymoon is much more than the U.S. mainland uh, people come for honeymoon. So this, uh, in 2012, there are 385,000 people from Asian country coming to Hawaii for honeymoon. So the total spending is uh, 
700 million dollars that is uh, just for the Asian people but if you look at US uh, people that come to the visitor for just for honeymoon is in 2000, 2012 the number is only 54,000 uh, so it's much lower and, all, and in Hawaii there has, we know that they have uh, foreign students and they come to Hawaii and they, they also have uh, contributions. So adding up all this and then you consider that they may, uh, because uh, all these Asian country, if they um, consider Hawaii or other state, but they choose not coming here because the gay marriage, and then they would reduce the number to come to Hawaii. And then we uh, calculate that, that is the uh, method. Asian, uh, and Indonesia or Malaysia, Philippines, Bangkok, it's all and of Japan. the Asian, and Japan. You, are you actually saying that 385,000 come just for marriage or celebration of a marriage? And correct. Because correct. there's literally millions, correct? Yeah, yeah. and then uh, I look at Professor uh, Lacroix's paper oh. and he he only consider the gain uh, that from U.S. marriage visitor because uh, the number in 2000, let me see. It's around 250 million over three years, I think he had suggested. Oh, that is his estimate. But it's the real million. number that compare how many uh, Asian people coming to marriage. US mainland visitor uh, to Hawaii, only 54,000. But from Asian is 300,000. Okay, what so you're, th you're saying your 700 million versus his maybe 75 million per year. Your, yours is per year, correct? 700 million? Yes, it's per year. 700 per year. And also for uh, his, I, uh, the number that uh, this paper percent they has two number one is the revenue gain another is the revenue plus the uh, in economists we call it a multiplier so actually if you calculating the uh, revenue that plus the multiplier and then it will produce a much bigger number for the economics impact the same thing the number I presenting here 200 uh, 234 million is just, just direct revenue. So if you put this money to multiplier, then the also it will be 10 times bigger, okay. the impact. I, I hear your numbers and I see it. I've got to get inside of your model because models are based on assumptions, etc. How did you arrive at the rationale that if same-sex marriage is passed, categorically 100% of the people don't show up or is it because of some cultural value that says it's going to stop or it's going to dwindle. I mean, how how are you extrapolating that this will be, you know, uh, no longer a destination? I'm trying to see where, where, where your model builds the logic of that. Yeah, because uh, as the Asian people that uh, we know that Asian people, their family value is um, the gay marriage or gay uh, behavior is not acceptable so also consider if they think about coming to Hawaii is for the clean air and clean environment but when they think that oh now the gay marriage are allowed then they will automatic to connect those to HIV disease and and also if they think they send their children to come to Hawaii for better education and they don't want their children to go to a gay environment uh, that get influenced because that is considered um, not graceful or not welcome, okay. not acceptable. I, so when people, then they had a choice to come into Hawaii or Florida or Guam, then when they think, oh, those places may be a better choice then they would deny the choice uh, okay. to coming to Hawaii. So it's very clear that there, there is a downside because of the negative part of it rather than certainty as to the, uh, well, I would say the certainty as to the amounts. 
Uh, regarding Indonesia or other places, it may have a stronger impact in some countries. I think all of Asia is not the same. Some of you saw earlier there was a Muslim uh, religious leader here, uh, an imam. Uh, I spoke later outside. The Hawaii Muslim Association is categorically against uh, same-sex marriage. In those countries, uh, the largest Muslim countries in Indonesia, probably that would apply, but places where it's with a large Chinese population, it may not exactly apply. Uh, which is much of Southeast Asia. But the point is you've set out something that otherwise we were not aware of other than Mr. LaCroix's uh, study where it was going to be of a benefit. So yours is about $500 million different than his, and I think that's okay, a benefit. Okay, thank you. It's more than, uh, it's okay, more than 500. It's that's more fine. than 500. It's four times higher. Uh, four, four times. times. Uh, okay. Madam Chair, just, just w w one note of thanking you for stepping forward in... I am amazed at how many former mainland Chinese have come to testify, which to me is verifying your sense that the lack of approval of same-sex marriage has been very approval, uh, very much apparent by those who have come forward okay, from a country you, where they were not able Warren. to speak, and I'm not able to speak now, but let me finish. Yeah. We're in a country that they're here able to speak out. Actually, Representative Ward, um, we're trying to accommodate few people I, who are trying but, to leave. Madam Chair, I think you know me by now. When you try okay. to shut me down, I'm going to talk all the more. So let me finish a statement. Okay, so I just wanted to... Okay, Look, Representative we've Ward. 38, we've been here for 38 hours, and I want 38 seconds to commend the mainland Ward. Chinese okay. for speaking in a democratic society because they come out of a communist society, they can't speak. Representative Ward, they're... Few people I who would needed not to make their doctor's appointment. To shut me down. By, no, Representative Ward. You know, I'm trying to be. Yes, Madam. I have finished. I want to commend. Thank you very much yeah. for your data. It's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know that. Um, okay, that. That's in the fine. World, many people fighting. Okay, thank you. For We're trying for that. to accommodate a couple people who need to go to the doctors by eight o'clock, and um, you know. They've been waiting for a long time. I totally respect they're, that. They're I'm right waiting in. for this opportunity okay, for two me. days. But I'm glad that I make it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Representative Farr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is um, 3895 still here, Mr. Travis Augustin? Good evening, Mr. Augustin. Thank you for being here and thank you for your testimony in this, we're getting into the later hour. Um, you know, something that you said struck me. You said the bottom line of this bill is that it does not protect an individual's rights to express himself or herself under the First Amendment. Now when you talk about expression, you know, most people when they think about the First Amendment, they think about freedom of speech. Um, and I'm going to assume that's not necessarily what you were referring to when you said the bottom line in this bill when you were talking about the exemptions. There's different forms of expression um, where public policy and expression will intersect is... I'm sorry, um, I can't hear you. Can you talk oh, sorry. closer to me? The intersection of expression and public policy is, is my bottom line. Um, there's going to be different forms, whether it, be, um, it with, whether it be by actions, whether it be by words or speech. Um, there's just different forms, and the vagueness in the bill concerns me with uh, just individuals who want to respectfully disagree and whether public policy will conflict with their, their, you know, their, their right to express themselves. So have you read the bill? I have. Okay, so with respect to the actual section on the religious exemptions for the, uh, for the churches mm -hmm. regarding solemnization, so you've seen that part, and then right. you've heard all the discussion about public accommodations too. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that, I mean, is that what's intersecting? I'm just trying to clarify. I'm still trying to, I need you to elaborate because Okay. I understand conceptually what you're talking about, sure. but I'm trying, you know, we're trying to make the best bill possible, right? And mm -hmm. so what and specific... I believe, you both, you, I believe you can. Right. What specifically would you suggest then? I don't have any specific language mm -hmm. um, that I would suggest, possibly in, maybe in the intent and in, in the findings that you're respecting, um, that there is, di there is um, opposite views on this issue. And being able to reconcile that and acknowledge that if this bill passes, there will be people that will respectfully disagree and acknowledging that they won't be punished whether it be civilly or criminally for their expression and I understand that there's there's boundaries that need to be created okay uh, okay Mr. Okay, Augustine right. sorry right. okay really at the end of the day you're an attorney 
You yeah. know, we're, okay, we're talking about 14th Amendment protections on one hand versus First Amendment protections on the other. We're correct. Right? That's, that's really what this boils down to. Mm -hmm. So in your learned opinion as an attorney, I mean, you're telling me right now you feel that this bill infringes upon First Amendment rights? I believe it falls short of protecting that and whether there's assurances or predictability. Because of the competing interests, you correct. feel that the language does need to be beefed up. I, I, I feel it needs to be refined, correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, any other questions? Okay, you have more questions? D not to this gentleman, but someone else. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, it's number 3967. Uh, it was the lady who said she was a bisexual. It was a unique testimony, and I wanted to ask her a question. 39... Six, seven. Hello. I'm not really sure how to ask the question, but it came up with the question to the governor that it may treat bisexuals unfairly in that they would be limited to either the male side of the preference versus the female side. Is that something that you've considered that the governor having said that he would suspect a lawsuit within a year of this bill if it did pass. Do you have any opinion on, as a bisexual, how this bill would affect you? I mean, I, I, I'm here for equal rights. So I believe that everyone should have the right to be married. Um, would, would the preference be to marry the male gender or the or the female gender. I mean, or I don't. Is it I don't a, is have that a, a preference. Question? I don't have a preference. Um, is marriage a consideration for you? Yes. I mean, I I am right now, and I have a boyfriend, so I am, and I guess what everyone would call a heterosexual relationship. But I have been in relationships with women in the past, so at this time, it it would not be a problem for me. Um, because marriage is recognized between a male and a female right now. But, I mean, it would go against it if I ever chose to be in a different relationship. Okay, so you, you were not one of the categories the governor was speaking about that he expect a lawsuit in the uh, near future. Okay. Thank you very much for testifying. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if not, what's your member? The members and audience indulgence. I wanted to take someone out of order because she needs, um, she has a medical condition and needs to get to a doctor right away. Okay. Thank you very much for making this exception. My name is Kelly Myers. I am number 4028. Aloha legislators for the state of Hawaii. I am honored to be here to speak in the presence of our elected officials who represent the people of the state of Hawaii. I am here to speak in opposition of Senate Bill 1, proposing legalization of same-sex marriage. During the past four days of demonstrating against this bill, I have witnessed some wonderful things. First of all, I have seen the unification of all faiths and churches to fight the ratification of this bill. I have seen people take off work and sacrifice hours and days to voice their opposition of SB1. I have seen Native Hawaiians fight to preserve their rights and heritage from encroachment by the government elected to protect them. I know this bill is wrong. It infringes upon my rights as a U.S. citizen to reserve the right to teach my children the values and religious beliefs I hold to be true and right. If this bill is passed, the children in our schools will be exposed to a lifestyle I believe is wrong and against the laws of God, nature, and man. Who are you to say what my children are to be taught when it comes to moral and religious beliefs? Who are you to infringe upon my right as a parent to teach my children what is morally and ethically correct? I implore you to stop the passage of this bill my religious beliefs and freedoms are protected under the Constitution of the United States, whose very foundation was based on freedom from religious persecution. Protect our religious rights and freedoms from the destruction this bill would bring. I believe in God the Father and in his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next testifier, please.
Hello, my name is um, Falimari Funaki Anasi Molina, and I am a student that is coming from Pearl City High School. My number is 3968. Thank you. I am here to say that I am against SBI. I feel that we shouldn't be forced to learn about same-sex couples. If this bill was to pass, if my mom wouldn't take me out of the class that we are having to learn about same-sex couples, I would take myself out personally. Um, I feel that if same-sex same -sex couples would want to teach their children about their lifestyle, out of, no, out of no, this is no disrespect, I feel that they should just teach it at home instead of having it to be taught in our schools. I just want to say that I love all my gay brothers and sisters. I have nothing against them. I have, yes, I have gay family members and everything, but I stand in what I believe in, and what I believe in is the man up above. I am not a bigot, but I am a child of God. I love everyone because Jesus showed his first love. I, did, I feel that you guys should let the people decide on what they truly believe in, and I mean, I feel that, you know, SBI shouldn't be passed because of what may happen in Hawaii. Hawaii state motto says that we ha um, this is a land that pursues righteousness. And I feel that, you know, we all should have that. And I just want to say that I am, I am against same-sex um, marriage. I'm kind of nervous right now, but um, okay. I will stand for what I believe in. And what I believe in is the traditional marriage, which is a man and a woman, not man to man or woman to woman. And I was down here today and tell you guys that the SB1 shouldn't be passed because what would happen in Hawaii. And um, I wanna thank God for just bringing me here today and my family to stand for what we believe in, which is God. So thank you all and thank you for listening in Jesus name, thank, amen. Thank you very much. Before the next testifier comes up, uh, for the testifiers with numbers from 4,001 to 4,200, please check in. 4,001 to 4,200, please check in. Okay, next. Hi, my name is Ba'ai Tavale, all the way from Pearl City. My number is... 3970. I am born and raised on this beautiful island of Oahu. I am married to my husband, Burkhardt Aitavale, for 16 years with seven beautiful children. Um, my oldest is here. Hi, Des. It's my oldest. Um, I come before everyone here tonight because I strongly oppose SB1 for many reasons. Standing in line for three days was worth it. But to stand here in front of you to testify only for two minutes is ridiculous. Majority have said it all. Let the people vote. Let Hawaii vote. I stand here tonight for my family and friends, especially because I fear my God. A week ago, I told my husband, if if this bill goes through, we are moving to American Samoa. My husband told me, no, we cannot move. We cannot run away. We cannot be like Noah, if you know who Noah is. We are not leaving Hawaii if this bill goes through. We will stand firm. We will stand strong. We will stand as a family, as a ohana, as a ainga. This is our island. This is our home, and we're going to fight. Let the people vote. I know you have heard that the whole night. Majority have said it. I'm going to say it many more times. Let the people vote. Because I have 20 more seconds, I'm just going to chant it. Let the people vote. 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 Okay, I love okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. I love you. Thank you all. We next, love you guys. I bless next, you all and your family. Please. Amen. Thank next. You. Good 
evening. My name is Melissa Moyone. Registration number 3971. Born and raised on the island of Oahu, I am a mother to four beautiful children. I have three boys and one girl. I have been married to a wonderful husband for nine years. I, oppose, I strongly and respectfully oppose SB1. It's not because I don't like my gay brothers and sisters, no. I love them because why? Jesus loved them. Jesus died for you too. I have family that I love dearly. I have a cousin that I'm really close that that is lesbian. But she know that if it became between her and God, I would choose my God because my God is big. But one of my main issues to this bill, which I have many, are my first amendment rights. Can you guarantee that my first amendment rights are protected with no questions asked? I don't think so. So please, again, kill this bill where it stands, here in your hands, and let the people of, of Hawaii decide. My children are my life, and I'm sure that your children are yours. This is a serious issue that, that needs more than a couple of days to come to a decision. It will affect us today, tomorrow, and in the future. So please, again, vote no to SB1. Thank you. Thank God you. bless. Next, please. Good afternoon. Good evening. My number is 3972. I'm sorry, my voice, I lost my voice because I was screaming up there. Just to fight for our freedom and for our people. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to give um, God all the glory and honor to, um, for us to be here as the sisters and brothers. Um, thank you all um, up there to, um, to, you know, to listen for our voice. We just want to thank you guys so much. Um, I'm here today because um, I oppose SP1. I want my voice to be heard. So I have a two wonderful boys, a wonderful husband, man of God, Risiti Lungalua, that he's upstairs cheering out for our right, for our, our children's right, and for our Hawaii's right. So I'm here, we just want to um, let you guys know that God, he's a miracle. We just want to thank you guys. God do miracles so great. Miracle can and do happen, but only through your faith in God. So we just want to ask you guys to stand up, to vote. We want you guys to say no to this bill. Kill this bill for our right and for our family's right. For our brothers and sisters here, our gay fa our fr our friends, we love you guys. We're not here to against you guys. We're here to do the right thing for our ohana and for our children. And we, I just want to thank you guys for um, giving me this opportunity to share my, um, my and to hear my voice and to do the right thing for our, our country and for our Hawaii. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, please. Aloha and talofa. My name is Neil. My number is 3973. I will stay over here, top of my heart. I love the kids. They stand outside there and hold the one mom, one dad, and one me. I hope I stand over there in the outside. That's why my voice not powerful. The other people, they stick in the hand and show the private stuff. I told them, car class. I know the government and the president, they see this. If you love your kids, there are plenty the children outside there. We want the freedom. And this bill, I know like this bill. This bill in going to my island cannot pass. Yeah, I'm serious. 
I love all the people inside here. Hello and God bless. This bill, I don't like this bill. No same sex marriage. Okay, all my family, Shaka, Aloha, Mekaliki Maka, God bless. United States of Hawaii. Next, please. Hi, my name is Liz Alarcio, registered voter for Milani, number 3819, and I strongly oppose to Senate Bill 1. I'm here standing before you in behalf of my three daughters, 18-year-old granddaughter, and my first unborn grandson, Aiden. I don't want to think, I don't want them to think that this is the way to live now if this bill passes. We're not ready for that. I love them dearly, and this is why I don't want them to grow up in this. I have friends, close people, in fact, who are in this lifestyle, and I treat them like family, and they even call me auntie, and they're no different. I love them. Us adults can adapt to this, but not for the new generation. More so, this lifestyle to be taught in school, I really find that unacceptable. Again, we're not ready for that. And for our spiritual rights to be infringed upon is another unacceptable matter. Please preserve the rights of the church. I believe fully in traditional marriage, and I want to enjoy and preserve that in later years to come. We are in our 36th year of marriage. Our lives will be so altered to cater to the few and definitely hurt so many. I feel that our freedom is being taken away, so please, let us not rush into this. Please vote no to SB1, and I urge you, please let the people decide. Please let the people decide. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, can we just, uh, just to remind some, some people are leaving, some of the testifiers are leaving if they could stay. If, if you'd like to stay for questions, you're more than welcome, but you don't have to. Okay, next. My name is Glenn Shimabukuro, my registration number 3976. Good evening. My name is Glenn Shimabukuro. I am a registered voter, a husband, and a grandfather. I am testifying against SB1. I want to thank you for allowing me to testify in opposition to this legislation. I believe this legislation should not be considered for decision-making until further deliberation and analysis be done. The public has not been given the opportunity to hear, digest, review, and understand the full implication of this proposal. Why the rush? I believe there are dire consequences for businesses, education, and the healthcare related matters that have not been properly addressed or made known to the public, may I urge you to vote no on this passage of legislation. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Next, please. I'm Seth Jeremiah, and my number is 3990. 3990. I love everyone, but pa uh, one, every time on Monday and th through Thursday, I came to the testimonies, and some lies have been told about me. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed, endowed by their creator with certain un unlatable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are interested among men, Deferring their just powers from the government. Consent. Consent. Oh, government. shoot. Consent, 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 consent. 
O consent of the governed, that whatever any form of the government becomes destructive of the these ends, it is the right of people to alter or establish, abolish it, abolish it and institute new government. Thank you for allowing my son to share this. First and foremost, I'm sorry, excuse me, sir, but my recollection is that you've testified already. Your son is welcome to testify, but he is. Thank you for allowing him to testify. Okay. Thank you very much, then. I guess what he was sharing is. I'm sorry. It's your son gets to testify, but you've already testified. No, I'm not done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we just want to thank Governor Obama Crombie as well. Next, please. Go ahead. All right. My number is 3814. And I commend you representatives for being out and listening to all of our comments. But I do want to pay special attention to my representative, Jean Ward, and to Bob McDermott there. I noticed they have been here. They seem to be glued to their seats. They're here more than I think anyone else. And they have been representing our feelings and our wishes. And I, I brought flags to give to them. I will bring them to your offices because you speak up for us and we appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> uh, I do question though um, the inconsideration and the radical behavior of our governor to, <clears throat> whoops, just a minute, a phone call is coming in. Uh, uh, okay. okay. If you want uh, to I, yeah. it, the radical behavior of our, govern, our, of our governor, who for the first time in history has, called a, has unilaterally called a special session. It was not an emergency. These people say, or, or one gentleman here, representative said, you know, this is a long time coming. It's been 20 years. So tell me, why the rush? Why the special sen session? We have homeless in our streets in Waikiki, and that's our tourism. Our tourism, it's affecting our tourism that is one of the major uh, uh, money makers of our islands. And this, the money that is spent on this could have well been spent much more frugally on taking care of the homeless. Uh, okay, thank you very much. At this point, members will be asking questions of the group that was that's just testified. Any Chair? questions? Chair? Representative McDermott. Thank you. Could I have the uh, Samoan girl who led the chant come on down here? Sumo, Bobby. So, as the uh, Americans or Western Samoan? American. Okay, as a Samoan, have you or your family ever experienced discrimination based on the way you look or the way you dress with your EA going into the store or something like that? A lot of times. A lot of times. As Samoan culture, you have uh, practice. Uh, the fafa finge, right? Yes. And they're welcome? Yes. And they're loved? Yes. They're part of the family? Mm hmm When I heard you lead the chant, I didn't hear you hurl anything hateful or anything else. You just expressed an opinion, correct? Correct. But someone yelled out that you, a Samoan, were a bigot. But you're not. You're loving people, aren't you? Yes, very loving. And you're welcoming people. to be people. that way. And I'm going to be that way until I die. Thank you very much. I have one last thing to ask you. Famole mole mai se sikaleki. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, let's go on to the uh, next one. Well, I have a question. Uh, Sorry, Representative Foley, go ahead. Ma la uso Samoa. Ofele kama Samoa. Is that a Samoan uh, 
You were in a Psalm 1, Alava Lava, lava yes, today. Sir. <laughs> Uh, uh, not, not to be rude, but can you tie this to the bill somehow, please? Talofa. You cannot just stand up and talk. That's a rule. I'm sorry, Representative Bali. I'm, I um, Mr. Chair, but that's that's exactly you know, given the diversity of the state of Hawaii and and the great impact that this uh, bill is going to have on a myriad of cultures, Mr. Speaker, I think I think it's very important especially for my uh, Samoan brother over here. I know it took a lot of courage for him uh, to come and, and speak today. You can, you can see, Mr. Speaker, that he is struggles. There a, is there a question here somewhere or something uh, to do with yes. the bill or something? Yes, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm just wondering why uh, he, he gathered uh, the motivation to come, given the challenges he has in communicating with the, uh, in the English language, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to ask him about where exactly that courage comes from. So what was the big motivation for you to come out and, and, and speak today on the bill? I come out today, I want to support, I want to support uh, my, the, the people, especially the, the kids. That's the main point I come today, the kids. I don't like the kids to see this kind of stuff on the street, if you come my island, they cannot do this kind of stuff. I'm serious. His people, they come over there, they cannot stand. And then they, all that village, they, they come. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, Remember, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, any other questions? Smile. Okay, seeing none. Uh, let's move on to the next testifier. Who's next? <laughs> Please come forward. Evening. Aloha. My name is Given Miyamoto. I'm a native Hawaiian and third generation Japanese. I'm the father of five. I'm sorry, can and, you just give us a grand, grandfather of 13. Can you just My tell number us? is 4011. Mahalo. I oppose SB1. If SB1 is passed, the following will occur but are not limited to this list marriage between a man and a woman which is essential to the creation of a traditional family will be less solemnized. The first commandment God gave Adam and Eve was to multiply and replenish the earth, which is still enforced by him, will not be obeyed. Many children entitled to birth in the bonds of holy matrimony and raised by a loving father and mother will not receive this entitlement. Schools which teach the new definition of marriage and correct, will correct and austerize okay, our children who openly disagree based on their family's religious belief. Health and sex edu education courses will also reflect the new definition in its curriculum. Lawsuits will be brought against individuals, small businesses, marriage counselors, and even some churches and the related organize, um, organizations, including educational and traditional institutions, which uh, charitable institutions, which refuse to support sex marriage and religion um, under religious conscious grounds, religious groups that provide family family related services such as adoption will be stripped of uh, their state licenses for being unwilling to treat same-sex marriage as equal to traditional marriage. Society will increasingly view and treat those who support traditional marriages for religious reasons as bigots and ignorant. For these reasons, I strongly oppose SB1. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Next, please. Good evening. I thank you, 
I thank you, I thank you for your time and your listening. My name is Joanne Wazinski. My number is 4017. I'm a resident of Hawaii, a registered voter in Kaanaka Kai, Molokai. This is not my thing to do, but I thank God that I live in a free country. We might not have a vote on this, but we still have a voice, and I thank God for that. I'm thankful for my sisters, the Kapunas, that were able to come from Molokai and sing for us. They sing like that over there, and we appreciate them. I'm not a singer. I am a Christian, and I believe that my God still speaks today. And I just share this as my belief, not to put it on anyone. I don't sing, but in two weeks before the towers got hit, I was in Maui getting out of the car with my sister, not thinking about a song, but a song came up out of my spirit. And the song was, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. I couldn't understand. Uh, the next week I went to the same church. They had a speaker. He went to give a sermon. He got up, went to speak, went over to the piano and started pounding the piano and singing the same song. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they're safe. I do pray like many people do. I couldn't understand how I got that kind of song. This year, someone gave me a book in Molokai, a person by the name of Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. He believed what the Lord showed him. God blesses us, I believe. He blesses and has. He believes. Thank, thank you very much. Next, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. My number is 443-4003. My name is Gwen Miles. I'm a wife of 29 years with one son, and I oppose this bill, SB1. Mahalo for the all awesome prop uh, privilege to just be here today. I honor all of you legislators, and I feel for you, too. I wouldn't want your job. We are so blessed to live in Hawaii. At age 15, I first visited Hawaii. When I got off the plane, the sky was blue, the sun was yellow, and the fragrance of plumeria, you could smell it just after you got off the plane. As Judy Garland put it in The Wizard of Oz, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yes, Hawaii has physical beauty. But what makes it unique is its people. I got a big dose of Hawaii just after a few weeks at Kalani High School. It was a pep rally, football pep rally. The music was a Hawaiian war dance. One of our football players was dancing to the music in his uniform with a coconut bra, with Hawaiian feathers shaking, doing something like a hula. One of the female teachers wore a slip underwear over her clothes with hula bamboo stick singing and dancing along with the football players and the cheerleaders. Not too many years ago, I'd come to the opening of the legislature just to hear the local entertainers make fun of the ethnic differences we have here in Hawaii. They would poke fun at the quirks of the various cultures here. That's our ohana love that is unique to Hawaii. I commend you legislators for being here, having the stamina and fortitude. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good night. Next, please. Aloha. My name is Doran Porter, Vice Chair of the GLBT Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii number 4119 from Kaneohe, Hawaii. I am here to testify in strong support of SB1. I stand on my written testimony and the fact that last year, 
we paid over $1,500 in federal taxes and over $12,000 in additional tuition, despite the fact that we had a civil union in 2012. I do want to share a couple additional thoughts with you. I see and feel the pain expressed by opponents of this bill. However, I take strong offense to those who have expressed their displeasure of my community's use of the terms civil rights and marriage to define our struggle and our wishes to live in a society where we are no longer treated as sec second class citizens. We too have a history wrought with pain and even death at the hands of our oppressors. Many of my brothers and sisters wore pink triangles as they were led to the gas chambers of Auschwitz. Others were beaten as they walked down the streets by law enforcement officers just because they were different. And not too many years ago, I lay on the street as a group of youth kicked me in the ribs while shouting religious epitaphs that I, after I came to the aid of a brother under their attack. No, please understand, this is very personal to us, and we'll, we'll, we will no longer stand by as others seek to oppress us or deny us our rights. I would like to leave you with a quote from Founding Father James Madison, the civil rights of none shall be abridged on account of the religious beliefs of worship, nor shall any nation, national religion be established, nor shall the full faith and equal rights of conscience be in any manner or in any pretext infringed. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, please. My number is 4001. My name is Roberta Chang. I was born and raised here. I am a registered voter of the state of Hawaii. My paper says good morning, but it's good evening, I understand. I've been with you since this morning. I've been with you since Monday. I've listened. You have on your electronic technology my written testimony before you. You know I oppose. SB1, kill the bill. I just want to add to that testimony that I've learned a lot throughout this process. I learned a lot throughout this week about myself, what I believe in, about others and their reactions. <coughs> I've seen each of you and I've matched named with your faces. My comments have also evolved as one of you keep mentioning about three things I've learned, I have learned to share with others and others in other districts. I've stood in line. I've met people. A senator, number two, I learned that a senator lied to me. He said I needed to understand that it takes years to pass a bill because it has to go through all the processes. Apparently, with SB1, it is obviously not true. At my age, I've watched people be voted in and voted out, forgiven and voted back in, and probably will be <coughs> voted back out depending on what they vote on this issue. What lessons and legacies have they leave that they will leave behind. And it's not fear that I'm voicing here, it's concern about the arrogance of the senators who listened or did not listen and still went ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Four zero four three, David Chun. When Christians disagree on something, such as gay marriage, our Christian default is to refer to the Bible. And the Bible that Jesus himself read and quoted from states that homosexuality is wrong. While Jesus did not say much about homosexuality himself, at least it was not written down, Jesus did talk about marriage. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, in the beginning, God created them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Now, according to the words of Jesus, marriage is between a man and a woman. 
And according to the Bible, homosexuality is a sin. Now, LGBT community, I know when someone calls you a sinner, our response in Hawaii is like, hey, what? <laughs> what are you calling me? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt when someone called me a sinner years ago, the first time. But please, I pray, listen to the rest of the story. One day, a woman caught in sin was brought to Jesus. Her accusers wanted to stone her. But Jesus' words made everyone drop their stones and leave the woman alone. Then Jesus turned to the woman and said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Starting with me, everyone here is a sinner. But when we come clean to Jesus, he forgives your sins. Jesus loves you. He makes you ohana. And then Jesus calls you and me to rise above your past to go and sin no more. You know, Pascal once said, there is a God-shaped hole in each of us that both of us, homosexuals and straight, try to fill with pornography, any kind of stuff. We end up empty. But when we come to Jesus, Thank you very much. we are Next, filled. My number is 4045, and my name is Insanaru Chan. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a registered voter, and what I'm going to say now is a repetition of what you have heard a thousand times, but I'm still going to say it because it's from my heart, and it's my deepest concern, and I don't know if you are hearing it or not. I'm a mother of four young children, age ranging from four to ten years and I'm against the same-sex marriage bill. My husband and I have been here all this time, even to the point Thursday night, we have to ask them to get ready for bed and go to sleep by themselves because we were here until midnight because this is a really serious matter for us and our family. I'm a stay-home mom because my husband and I agree that it is our responsibility as parents to educate and train our children in the path of righteousness so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. And we have been teaching and training our children to be responsible, productive, and a community contributor. But today I feel threatened thinking about what my children and I as a parent will go through as a consequence, as a result of this bill, especially in the area of education and our moral values and uh, the Christian beliefs that we are teaching to our children. The lives of my children are precious and their future is important. So I am not going to take chances where their life and future is at risk. When I called and talked to someone at the district representative office, he was kind to listen to me and he said, I hope things work out for you. Well, how will things work out if my representative does not hear my voice? Lastly, I admit that in the past, I have cast my vote without doing my homework on my candidates. This has been a wake up call. I urge all responsible and concerned citizens and voters to kindly study and find out what your candidate is before you cast your valuable vote. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, please. My number is 4032. My name is Andrea Andrist. I'm a full member of the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu. It's social justice ministry, and I'm a Buddhist. We keep hearing that marriage is the most sacred institution in society, and I do believe most people get married in a church with the sanctity of matrimony <coughs> at heart. However, 50% of these sacred matrimonies get replaced by a divorce decree, a legal right opposed by the church fiercely, a right that Christians get at family court. But divorce is legal in spite of churches because the separation of state and church is a legal fact. Marriage, just like divorce, is a legal right that starts materializing with a marriage license. It's not about religious blessings or wedding parties. Some citizens are spiritual, law-abiding, but not part of organized religion. That's part of the freedom of religion. So equality, equal rights to marry, it's certainly not an issue that is being rushed when it's been 20 years in the making. Justice delayed is justice denied. You have now the opportunity to stop discrimination and vote for equal rights before the courts will. 
Thank you very much. Could you just, I'm sorry, could you tell us your number before you leave? Four zero three two. Four zero three two. Mahalo. Next, please. Hi, my number is four thousand forty four. I'm in opposition to SB one, and I think this. I I don't think I know this bill should be trashed. I wish you could just press that button and trash this bill. I thank God that my mother and father are not here to see and witness this tragic event in Hawaii's history where people that represent you seem to be looking the other way. Not all of you, fortunately. But this special session demonstrates a lack of representation in our leadership. I've heard things like equal rights, civil rights, marriage rights. Marriage cannot be changed by men. This is natural law between a man and a woman. As far as the governor, it's not about money. It's not a, it shouldn't be about any money. If, if, if you offered me $230 million, I still would go the same way I'm going right now. Money does not change me or my values or my mind. As for myself, I respect all people. I don't hate anybody. It, the only thing I hated was killing in Vietnam, and that I had to do. In the 60s and prior, it was not aware of the discrimination of the black people that they endured. I read about it in a book or shown it in other ways. But until it happens right at home, right at home it does not seem like a reality. If I gave blood for years to help all people, but some people cannot give blood. It's because of their lifestyle. That's their decision. The people of Hawaii should be, should be deciding what is marriage and not forced on us. This is not a movie or a movie station that if we choose, we can decide not to watch or change the station. This is forced on me and my families of Hawaii. Why can't this wait? This is the time to show all people their rights, but not those just selected. Where are my children's rights, the right of a child who needs a mother and father? This is not the time to validate a lifestyle promoted thank, thank by government. Thank you very much. Next, please. Honorable Chair and Committee members, my name is Putter Minkin, and my uh, number is 4013. Uh, I'm a resident voter since 1972 of Kailua uh, in the last 20 years, and I want to thank you for your grace and your perseverance. I've read and am opposed to Senate Bill Number 1 because it's my belief that Jesus Christ himself defined marriage in the Bible in the verse that another brother read you just a few minutes ago, Matthew 19, 4 and 5. But I want to talk to you about belief systems. A, wife, a wise man once said, every man and woman has a belief system. So my question to you is tonight, what anchors your belief system? Some of us are Buddhists, some are atheists, some are Muslims, some are agnostics, some worship the earth. But the fact is that we have different spiritual belief systems, and that explains why this process is so contentious. Different belief systems inevitably collide. And government has to create laws. Sometimes laws don't work. The logic is not clear, and people fight over freedoms. Senate Bill 1 would force a radical government view into the sacrament of marriage. And here's an example of bad logic. Former Judge Levinson said last night, religious doctrine is God's law. And if you will, it's very important. But God's law is an apple and state law is an orange. Sounds reasonable in the face of it. However, God's law is different from state law. This logic shakes hands with the lie that the church and the state are separate. Logic is flawed. You cannot separate apples from, you can separate apples from oranges, but not beliefs from law. That's just silly. How can you separate the scent of a turkey cooking from Thanksgiving? How can you remove the color red from blood? How do you separate heat from light? What's my point? You can't separate me from my beliefs any more than you can separate the color red from blood. You can't select, you separate a large group of people like Christians from their belief in the sacrament of marriage. So the, the overriding truth is marriage is only between one man and a woman, and thank, I ask you to thank vote you very much. no. Next, please. Um, my, num 
numbers is a four zero six seven. Aloha. Um, Hello. I think good evening now. I'm waiting ten hours. Well, my name is El Shiraki and twenty two year member of the Palo Neighborhood Board. I am against Senate Bill number one. It's just not democratic and it is unconstitutional for twenty senators to pass Senate Bill number one. We the people have the right to vote on this issue. Do we want same sex marriage in Hawaii? Oh. Please respect the rights of the people of Hawaii. There are hundreds and thousands of people out there shouting, let the people vote. Let the people vote. Let the people vote. Please kill Senate Bill number one. They are treating the people of Hawaii like second class citizens. And we the people of Hawaii should not stand still and be afraid. We should not take this bullying from our legislatures. Let's stand up together and fight and defend our constitutional rights to vote against same-sex marriage. Okay? Uh, I submit to you the notion of placing this issue in the form of a constitutional amendment and on the ballot for voters to decide is the only acceptable means of arriving at what the people of the state of Hawaii wants. The issue should not be decided by you, but us, the great community who must live with the consequence and rewards of what we see and just and fair. Simply put, this is too great a question to leave to your discretion and interpretation. Do not be afraid. Let the people decide. Voters have the power to decide, not the legislature, okay? You were elected and you are working for the people. So listen and obey. Let the people vote. Let the people vote. Okay, thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. Next, please. Hi, my name is Cecilia Gay, and my number is 4131, and I am here in support of SB1. I consider myself an advocate for families. I've had experiences in my life that have allowed me to develop a broad definition of what family is. I was adopted into a Samoan family, and I grew up in a loving and supportive community with Fafa Finge, who were normally a part of our society. We loved them. I got plenty of lickings, but I knew I belonged there. I grew up in a religion. I'm Mormon. And I was taught families are forever. My church taught me that the greatest blessings on earth can be found in the home. And guess what? In my church, there's homosexuals there. I'm a military veteran. I was stationed overseas. I had no family. And I developed a new family. Race, different races, different gender, different sexual orientation, but I learned a new saying there, I got your six. I came back here to Hawaii and I got married to a man. We've been married 14 years and we have four children. They have been my greatest source of happiness on this earth. I began working for other families in Washington State in the juvenile department. I worked with kids coming from extreme abuse, sexual, physical, verbal. I did not find homosexuals as parents there, but I did find homosexuals. They were thrown out of their homes. Then I went and got a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, began working with homosexuals in my church, in the community. Same issues, I want to love. Now I'm getting my doctorate in, in clinical psychology, deepening my understanding of families and what it is to be hom uh, homosexual. Please vote no, family is love. Thank you very much. Next, please. Uh, 4034, Jessica Luning and my minor uh, uh, sixth son are going to testify together for that minute and a half. Um, I, I'm a teacher and I'm also a private preschool owner, so I'm not a nonprofit. I rent from a church and I'd like to share a little quick clip of my four year olds who I teach to read before entering kindergarten.
So they're saying, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, I come to you as a kanaka ma'ole. Born and raised from the family Helenihi and Luning, my father swam with kanamoku. My great-grandfather swam with kanamoku. We talk about equal rights. This is Hawaii. What happened to the Hawaiians? I'm an American. I yield to the American way. What's happening? Our country, we're a laughing stock. Uh, other countries, we lead democracy. This is not democracy. I yield to my son who goes to Kamehameha School. I'm a mother of eight. My name is Jonah and I'm against SB1. And it, my advice to you guys, it's best to kill the bill and go through the process again. My maka'u ika hana, maka'u ika moloa. Don't be lazy. And just because we're going through all this and it's strenuous, doesn't mean that you should go through it again. Because it'd be because the vast majority obviously doesn't like this bill, but there is also a minority out there and they want this bill. And you guys being the governing body, you guys need to see both sides just. And Okay. I want Thank you very much. Food, sorry. At this point, we'll, members will break for questions of this latest uh, group of testifiers. Questions? Hey, speaker? Chair? Uh, Dermot. The last group of testifiers, could you guys stay? You, you mentioned you have a preschool. Um, yes. is, is there a faith-based component to that at all? Yes, there is. Um, 18 years ago, I was a welfare mom with many children, and I started my own preschool 10 years ago. And I teach Hawaiian children how to read. We SAT test them, and we, ha we rent from the church. And so they make a profit from our rent. And maybe I may not have a place to rent anymore. 90% um, of our children are Hawaiian, and they read at the middle of first grade when they leave our preschool. Yes, and it will affect me either way. Do you when you teach them at that young age, and uh, you said it's faith-based, so I, I'm assuming you inculcate them with your values, and uh, you know, I say your values, your faith's values. My faith values, like malama and pono and kukua, yes, and, and Jesus Christ, but irrelevant to the fact that one amendment to own a business in America should not be trumped by a civil rights uh, issue, or the right to a child to have an education, that should not be trumped by a civil rights issue such as this. This isn't a civil rights issue. So yes, we do, we do teach values, of course. Right, would you feel comfortable compromising your values to, uh, if this bill passed and they said, okay, you, you, you can't say that a mom and dad is the optimal, you have to change that. And I'm not even sure it comes up, and, but, but it's part of your faith, right? Exactly. I would not be comfortable because everybody has the right to choose what business they want to, to come into. Uh, and I have the right as a business owner, straight or, or gay, to say, I don't want to do business with you because, because you're loud or obnoxious or we're not able to do it. And if you change this law, I may not have that choice as a business owner. I'm not against... I, I have no pilikia with, with gay people. I'm not going to close my business, but I don't want somebody to say, oh, because you're a Christian and I'm gay and you kicked me out, that I'm going to sue you now. I've worked too hard for this. I don't depend on any assistance from the state. We have eight children. This is one of my babies. The rest of them are all voting all over this island. Sons. I have sons. We are blessed indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Uh, Vice Chair Har. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I have Roberta Chang come up, please? Good evening, Ms. Chang. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm sorry that you had to amend your testimony to note good evening as opposed to good morning, but thank you for being in this with us since thank the you. beginning of this week. Um, it's my understanding that you're a preschool teacher. You're a preschool teacher. 
or a preschool I've been in the year? early childhood field for th over 33 years now. Okay. I've directed three preschools. Okay. So did you ever work at a religious-based um, preschool? Yes, I have. Okay. So are you familiar with this bill and public accommodations? No. I... You know, as far as this bill is concerned, I read it and read it and read it, and the reason why I'm opposed it is because I haven't had enough time to discuss this with others, with uh, the representatives, with you folks. Um, this thing just slipped right in, and I'm really appalled. I watch so many people voice their concern on Monday night, and the senators seem to have just turned a deaf ear or they had their own hidden agenda. And I think, you know, we should just be honest with each other. You know, is our testimony worth gonna, you it, folks it, listening to? Is this a to? response to a question or? Okay. Well, no, she's telling but, me. So what's, what was the question? No, I asked her, I was asking her about her position. I thought that she said she was a preschool teacher and I was trying to understand how the, what, what she felt about that bill because she came from a religious organization right okay, so but she said that you know the issue. you know right now okay, in front of the question so in front of the um, legislators okay. and you know that there's a bill out there that's being concerned and, and showing concern for the religious based preschools because I was told I, I'm, I'm not I still haven't heard a question, Representative. Okay, okay. I was told. Sure. No, this is uh, a reflection on this. Not, this what, Chang, what, what, question. Ms. Chang, wait, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, listen. The okay. question is, okay, you're explaining why you are so upset right now. But the right. question is, with respect to this particular bill, what is your issue with this particular bill? It's very confusing. It's ambiguous. It's uh, very vague. But I'm also hearing you talk about process. And the process I went through... Um, you know, I was sort of reassured that this okay. bill or any bill that comes out of the Senate or the House or whatever, there's a process and it takes time. And it and for some well, bills, sorry, it takes you years. Who told you that there's a process and that it takes time? Where did you get that from? Just be, I mean, from a senator. Oh, I see. And okay. I rather not just well, embarrass okay. him right now. I, mean, I, I think okay. we've been over this topic okay. with multiple people all day. <laughs> Okay, but, thank you. Um, anything else? Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Members, thank you. Anything else? Chair, I'd like to ask the Vietnam veteran a question. Okay, Representative McDermott. That's you. First of all, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it has to do with religi religious liberty. Are, are you familiar with uh, Muhammad Ali? Yes, I am. Formerly known as Cassius Clay? Yes, I am. I followed him all the way. And, and uh, you were in Vietnam. Are you familiar with regard to religious liberty, uh, his case before the United States Supreme Court, in general terms? In general terms, he, he refused to serve this country on his religious beliefs. And he got a unanimous decision in support of him, correct? Correct. Uh, are you aware that this bill before us is much narrower than uh, any exemption or consideration that was given to Mr. Ali? Yes, I'm well aware of that. Okay, thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Thank Members, you. any other questions? Okay, seeing none, let's go on to the next testifier. Who's next? My name is Lorna Cockett, and my number is 4029. I'm a wife, mother, grandmother, and had taught preschool in Honolulu for 13 years. I strongly object to holding this special section. No, First, so. because Hawaii had already defined marriage in November 1998. You secondly, you continue to witness the mama and papa bear instincts roaring to protect so Ohana. I, I too hold the same position. Thirdly, the UN promoted human rights directives intending to protect and provide for basic care and protection to a certain group in the world's youngest second youngest nation. The 8,000 villagers whom I daily lived amongst much of the past six years has been experimenting and living out these directives. What was meant to be a good thing has caused the opposing end of the directive to surrender given responsibilities and rights following the rules as left for interpretation. 
They are confused and continue to step backwards, specifically because of these human equal rights declaration. SB1 has the potential to put us in the same boat where the proposed law, because the proposed law is too vague and left for various interpretations. The, the UN Declaration of Human Rights 18 states, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, and observance in public or private. I do not see SB1 protecting my freedom, nor the people who seem to be a majority. Regarding education, Declaration 26 states, it shall promote understanding tolerance among all nations, racial or religious. Please note, there is no wording for lifestyle or preference groups in which my calculative thinking and deep conscience convinces me we are discussing today. You cannot impose SB1 in lieu of equal rights with all its good intentions without carefully considering the off offensive social and legal ramifications. Thank you very Thank much. You. Next, please. Four zero three zero. Hi, I'm Marsha Miyamoto, registered voter from Mililani. I oppose SB1. Kill the bill, not Hawaii. Saying no to SB1 reflects love for Hawaii, not hate or prejudice. <coughs> Saying yes to SB1 grants privileges to some, but destroys rights for many. Everyone deserves love and respect, regardless of sexual preference, race, religion, etc. And democracy is supposed, to su is supposed to protect the rights of everyone. SB1 fails to do this. Don't be deceived by the small Band-Aid House Bill 6. Just kill the bill, not Hawaii. This bill opens doors for even incest and polygamy from what I understand. And it says, and don't force Hawaii through consequences as other states in Canada suffer from the impact of same-sex marriage. Take time to thoroughly examine the many aspects exposing unforeseen complications of this non-urgent yet serious matter. Hawaii's children are the real victims of SB1. Look at what's happening in, in all the other places that allow same-sex marriage. Don't overlook our children and our rights. In schools, teaching homosexuality will be unavoidable because topics of institutions, marriage, pops up throughout the whole curriculum. Schools must not be used as hidden means to develop into larger dominant culture as SB1 will impose. This is brainwash in disguise. Please kill the bill, not Hawaii's children. You were all elected respectively, respectively for your integrity with expectation to hold Hawaii's best interest. I really want to support you all to make the right decision, for it will leave a mark on Hawaii's history and my heart forever until the end of the world. Please kill the bill, not Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Marianne Joy, 4005. Thank you. I'm opposed to this bill. It appears that this special legislation has been designed to shove same-sex marriage down the throats of Hawaii's people. And it is a shameful display of legislative arrogance and politics at, at its worst. The voters' intent was abundantly clear in 1998 when more than 70% of the people voted against same-sex marriage. The passage of SB 1 would be a slap in the face of a majority of Hawaii's voters, and make no mistake, there will be political ramifications. The people will demand that their legislators be held accountable. If there is a way to stop SB1, the people will find it, just as they did in 1998. There will be a grassroots movement to put the same-sex marriage issue on the ballot with clear and concise language that voters understand, and that is not ambiguous. This action is necessary because political trickery was used in manipulating the words of the same-sex marriage legislation that was put on the ballot years ago. Remember, more than 70% of Hawaii's voters voted for traditional marriage and thought that they had put the issue to rest permanently. Yet, here we are again, dealing with the same issue. 
the people's passion against this bill is more than sufficient to fuel the passage of a permanent recall referendum initiative law in Hawaii to prevent Hawaii's legislators from ignoring the voters. Also, the recall referendum initiative law is needed in Hawaii to prevent the kind of political trickery that was used to produce a false legislation that conned voters into believing that their vote for traditional marriage of one man and one woman was settled when they voted in 1998. If you pass SB1, you will awaken a sleeping giant. Thank you very much. Next up, please. I am George Joy, a combat veteran. My number is 4006, and I am opposed to SB1. In 1998, I voted against the same-sex marriage, and I resent the fact that we have to deal with this issue again. I was led to believe that in 1980, 98 vote uh, with the well the 1998 vote the same sex marriage issue would be thrown into the garbage where it belongs obviously political games were played back in 1998 if we have to deal with this issue again like me Hawaii's voters thought that they had defeated the same sex marriage issue the word games that politicians used in 1998 to deceive the voters into believing that lie were despicable and violated every ethical standard in a civil society. I'm also disgusted by the political game that is being played now with this special session, not allowing enough time to properly vet SB1. is not democratic and violates Hawaii's voters' rights. Governor Abercrombie and the legislature are not giving enough time for the people to understand SB1 and how it will truly impact Hawaii's families. That's our ohana. The question is why? Why is this being rushed through so quickly? We are learning now because of Obamacare that we must know what is really in the bill before voting for it. Why hasn't the governor and Hawaii's legislature Learn that lesson. The con game that politicians use, where they grudgingly put the same-sex marriage issue on the ballot in 1998, was like spitting in the faces of all of voters who voted against same-sex marriage. Then, and voters who oppose it today, Thank you so much. Next, act please. Like honorable men and women, do your jobs. Next, please. Aloha, I am Theldine Wagaston from Mililani and the sign number 4050. I'm a wife, mother of six, grandmother of 21, a great grandmother of one, and I still have my parents here with us. I speak for them as well, as we all stand in firm opposition of Bill SB1. Throughout these hearings, we've heard many factual and heartfelt testimonies, all testimonies of merit, worth, and value. But there was one testimony that should not be forgotten. Phil Lees, the educator from Canada, where same-sex marriage is a law, came here to sound the voice of warning to you, our legislature. He warned you about the effects that same-sex marriage has on its country, its constitution-protected freedoms. Religion, Clubs can't be set up in Canada school because the endorsement of these clubs would be an endorsement of their values, which would be in conflict with the sexual orientation. We've heard many, many more testimonies from people of Canada and how this has affected their country. So I ask you, what about our children? What about their rights? What about their freedoms? You've been warned and forewarned of the implications and effects that this bill will have on the people of Hawaii especially our children. This governor and some of Hawaii's legislatures are willing to strip the rights and freedoms of the majority of our citizens and silence our voices with this bill and this special session. session. We urge you as constituents to vote no on SB1 and allow the people to decide. 
regardless of the outcome and what may happen, I just testify to you of God's miracles and power in prayer. My brothers and sisters, near and far, rely on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rely on the power of prayer, and I promise you, he will guide you, he will lead you, and he will direct sorry, you, we're, we're, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. My number is 4054. Aloha no le kaipo. Kau inoa o mililani mauka. Mai ao he, 30. O u makahiki. Ua mau ke ea o kaaina ikapono. The life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. I am strongly opposed to SB1. This is not right. I am a native Hawaiian with 90% Hawaiian. My roots and ancestors come from Kau, Naalehu, Pahua, Honokaa, and Lau, Ha Hoi Hoi. In SB1, Section 572C, it indicates as a parentage presumptions based on marriage for same sex, mar uh, same -sex couples. Parentage presumptions will transfer. Native Hawaiian ethnicity claims to non-Native Hawaiian individuals. SB1 discriminates against me and my people in our land. In every instance in a same-sex marriage, at least one of the parents is not the biological parent of the child. However, when a parentage presumptions are applied, the, the ethnicity of both of the Hawaiian, I mean, uh, both of the marriage partners automatically transfers to the child. The child's birth certificate will read Native Hawaiian and benefits reserved only for Native Hawaiians will be transferred to non-Native Hawaiian children as a result of SB1. This Hawaii Marriage Equality Act of 2013, this is wrong, Kapu. <clears throat> the federal government protects the rights of the Indians and yet the legislators and representatives in this state want to take away the rights of the Hawaiians, my rights, and give these rights away. Our preamble in the Hawaii Constitution states to dedicate our efforts to fulfill philosophy decreed in the Hawaii state model. Shame on you if you vote for this bill. Let the people decide. Aloha. Chair Rhodes. We're going to go ahead and get as far into the 4,000s tonight as we can, but we're going to stop at 11. So uh, for, we're going to go as far with the 4,000s as we can tonight, but we will be stopping at 11. And then Monday, we'll come back on Monday, I believe, at 11 o'clock is the time in this same room. Okay, next. Chair Rhodes, uh, Chair of our Judiciary Committee, Chair Luke, aloha, and, and fellow representatives of the state of Hawaii, aloha. My name is Lance Pagador. Standing next to me is my daughter, and my number, sorry, is 4125. I would like to um, s s stand by what I submitted, which I tried to um, put as much information I could together from what I understood after reading the bill uh, with my testimony, but now would want to present to you what I feel now. Um, my, I, I was born on the Big Island, Kohala. Uh, when I read the bill, I called my mom in Kohala and said, Mom, did you know that the governor is, in, is planning to change this bill? And she said, oh, brother, how can that be? There's no time to talk about it. They have not even known about it. I submit to you, why so quickly are you trying to push this bill through? I also was standing out there holding the sign. Um, there was a gentleman, uh, I'm not even, I have not used, it, even used this acronym, LGBT, I think it is, drove up and started to confront us just right on the side of the road. Uh, I think he was trying to make me feel smaller than I am. I'm not really sure. That confrontation, I felt 
what if that happens to a same type of individual who comes to Hawaii that may have the agenda when somebody simply says, sorry, I cannot do that service, who doesn't even know about this bill if we pass it tonight? I also submit to you, if this bill passed, I'm so confused even right now, would we need to redefine a father and a mother? I'm, I'm in opposition of this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, next please. Good evening. My name is Charlene Kahumoku. My number is 4021. I oppose the SB1. I am a native Hawaiian and trust the legislator to do the right thing and represent us all. This is my testimony. I'm here and stand by this because of my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, my nieces and my nephews and my cousins. I heard the truth about Canada and Massachusetts by making it law and how it affected their families and state. I can't understand why the urgency to pass this bill. Let the people decide. I'm not against the people who's gay. That's between them and God. I'm against making it a law without considering repercussions you may be creating. The church represents God and his commandments. His words in church is our law. The confusion with our children. What is marriage? This is a preferable choice, never a law. If you give gays the right by making it a law, you then take away the rights of Christian beliefs. Where is the equality of the freedom of choice? Where is the phono in this law? I come before you through truth, through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do the right thing. Let the truth be revealed through Christ our Lord. I also, as a Hawaiian, you know, concern about my ohana, of what happens to them if this law is passed. How are they going to continue getting the land? I am on Hawaiian homes right now, but how would it affect my children? I thank you for allowing me to speak. I ask you, please, let the people decide. Thank, thank you very you. much. Next, please. Aloha, good evening. My name is Patty Paulino, and my number is 4046. Um, uh, this is a reflection over the last four days. It'll be different than my testimony I submitted. But um, I am a mother of three, a wife, a registered voter, a business owner. And as a mother of three teenagers, one of the common I'm themes. Sorry. Excuse me, what was your number again? 4046. 4046. So, and what was your name? Patricia Paulino. Because we have a completely different name. We have Chi Song. No, I, I have my number in my purse. Yeah. 4046. Um, my original, I get more time. Yeah, we'll, we'll reset the clock, but can you can you go back and check with the clerk and just get it straightened out because we don't have your name as you your number. Are you Patricia Paulino? I'm Patricia Paulino. Okay, you're 4064. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Sorry That's about right. That. 4064. I'm sorry. Please restart. Yes, okay. restart the clock. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm a mother of three. I'm a wife, a registered voter in Eva Beach, and a business owner. And as a mother of three, uh, one of our most frequent topics of conversation are the quality of their choices. Uh, we talk about every decision they make carries a weight. Uh, every decision they make affects someone else around them. Um, every dis choice either reaps a benefit it, or it promotes peace or it'll reap turmoil, uh, regrets, or disappointment. Uh, we talk about how when a bad choice is made and someone gets hurt, we can't just wash our hands and say, oh, oh well, it's, it's up to you now. You know, my part is done. Um, our bad choices carry a weight and we're responsible for what happens um, because every decision carries a weight. The same goes for you. Um, you can't just say things like, we can't control what the DOE will, in how they will interpret this bill, or we can't control what the courts are gonna say about this decision or that decision. And although those statements are true, you as our elected officials are responsible for the decisions that you make. 
you're responsible or you're required to make the best decision possible so that we the people don't end up as carnage in the wake of your decision. Many of you asked ex excellent questions on Monday mor or on Wednesday morning, and I thank you so much for that, but what it showed me is that this bill is yet not ready to be voted on. There were so many questions, too many questions left unanswered, too many things for the courts to decide. There was too much opportunity to twist and manipulate the law. Uh, will agencies decide to take liberty? And, and I just think that that will happen on just an allegation of discrimination. So I just ask that you look. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Next up, please. Margaret Scow, number 4031. Thank you. Aloha, Chair Rhodes, Chair Luke, and members of the committees. My name is Margaret Scow, and I strongly oppose SB1, the same-sex marriage bill. As a parent, I'm very concerned about this legislation. I'm concerned about the message that it will send all young people that homosexual behavior is safe, when in fact it is not safe. It's a very dangerous lifestyle. Although homosexual curriculum is not mentioned in this bill, we know that states where same-sex marriage has been legalized, homosexual curriculum in the public schools immediately follows. That's a great concern to me. In California, the state legislature approved a bill mandating pro-homosexual teaching in schools with no parent opt-out. The bill also prohibits any school material or instruction that reflects adversely on homosexuality, bisexuality, or transgenderism. Parents cannot remove their children from classes with offensive material. In New York, after same-sex marriage was legalized, taxpayers were forced to pay millions for Harvey Milk High School, a homosexual-only high school. In Maryland, after same-sex marriage was legalized, schools were forced to hire cross-dressers. As a result of my research on the impact of, so, of same-sex marriage on the public schools, I have just formed a coalition against homosexual curriculum. In addition, homosexuals are not born that way. It's a lifestyle choice. Thousands have come out of homosexuality. And um, please stop misusing the metaphor separation of church and state. Um, please protect our keiki in the public schools. Vote no on SB1 and let the people decide. Thank you very much. Okay, members, let's, uh, if you have any questions for this group, let's go ahead with those. Seeing none, no, who's next? Chair, next chair, 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 hold on, chair, I couldn't get the microphone in my hand on time. Sure, likely excuse. You're lucky I have the Go microphone ahead. in front of me, but uh, I, I have a question for Marsha Maramoto. Is Marsha here, number four, oh sorry, Miyamoto, four th zero three zero. Correct. Uh, I don't know if you or the testifier ahead of you said that the mama bear, papa bear instincts were, were coming out on you, and I wanted to know what, what would assure you to comfort you or to make you feel that you, your children, and everything are going to be all right. What, what, I, I know you said kill the bill, but is there anything short of that? Um, if this bill is passed, um, history books would be re rewritten and... It, it will unavoidably be in. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> um, it will definitely affect education. And from preschool, kindergarten up, um, if, if it's taught or it's somehow um, When it's taught, then children would be sort of like desensitized to whether what is right or wrong. And over the years, it would be, it would just be um, like brainwashing and it would change the whole society. Okay, your, your concern is at the educational level in the public school system. Uh, I'm sorry? Your concern is in the educational public school system, yes. the educational process. Okay. That and also the um, destruction of rights. Unless I mean, we, we've gone over this so many times, Representative uh, Ward, is there... Chair, I, I totally agree with you, but as you remember there, in pedagogical is, is, training, when one hears a message continually, it means that it's shared and it's a common takeaway 
of the particular meeting. Even though it's so a redundancy, the, it's a lesson of learning what the people of the state are saying. Hour that we go on with Having said that, I have another question money. for Representative. Uh, it, it was the, the initiative referendum and recall. I think we need to straighten the record on that. Initiative referendum recall. The lady who said that we need to do an initiative referendum and recall. She is, I didn't get a name or a number. She only said, let's put this up for recall. Yeah, Marianne, Marianne Joy. Marianne Joy, thank you, Representative Har. Marianne Joy, what state were you referring to that has initiative referendum and recall at the state there level? There are 24 states that have enacted a recall referendum initiative law in their states. And in those states, the representatives show respect for the voters. Unlike our state, it is what Clayton Yee, how he treated the people in the Senate hearings was appalling. It was disgraceful. I mean, he looked like he was a king, talking down to his to people who were lower than a dog. That is not uh, right. But the, that's why that 24 states they did that. Okay, that. I just wanted to make sure that I'm you sorry. knew that we do not okay. have that at the if state you, level. You establish that to your satisfaction. At the city and county level, it is a factor, but not yes. at the state level. Okay. okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Chair. There members, were, any other there questions? There were no states that did representative and put it on the ballot. Representative the Tokioka. People. That's what we want to do. Uh, thank you, Chair. And um, I think the, the couple that came up and you said your number was 4050. And I looked at it and the number didn't match the name. So I think your name was Salvine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, when you came up, I was looking at the number and it didn't match. But um, what, what is your number? My number is 4053. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I read 4050 instead. Okay, Th thank you. Thank you so much. And I know, um, when, when did you come here to testify? Have you been here since Monday? We've been here since Monday okay. for the uh, Senate hearing, yes. And how many of you came down? You, you're on one big, I saw your big family out there. How many yes, um, the children lying on little quilts and comforters, and that was our family. But when we came on Monday, we actually rented a bus filled it up with our family. Um, my parents, on their side, there's like over a hundred something uh, Chinese Hawaiian family. And, and the passion behind this issue, as the you passion behind about, is this issue is that, um, well, listening to the, I know you talked I about the feel, educational feel components. Okay. Yes, Can you yes. talk about with your family and your your niece? I mean, you might want to explain, and I'll give you. If the chair's indulgence will allow, um, I saw your niece outside with you, and she was almost in tears. And yes, um, I um, agreed to share my okay. time with her because um, she has some other personal obligations. She's been here with us since Monday. Um, Monica, I she didn't get to say her name because we were looking at the, the that two-minute time clock there. But her name is Monica. Um, Franco, I'm very and glad, she um, I'm actually. I'm very glad that you were willing to wait as long as you did. That this is an unprecedented hearing. I don't believe there's ever been a hearing this long in the history of the state of Hawaii. We've been taking testimony now for 27 hours as of the beginning, so it was another 12, 39 hours on one bill. So I'm, I admire your tenacity. I'm very appreciative that so many people wanted to participate, but. Can we please move on because we've been doing this for 39 hours. And Chairman Rhodes, I just want to say to you um, how cordial this group has been. Well, and we uh, we've been watching. The family's been watching. And we appreciate the fact that you are allowing us to speak and not turning and glad, away. And we're glad you came. The thousands. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vice Chair Har. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lay Kaipo, can you please come up? Good evening, Lay. Thank you so much for your passionate testimony. Um, you know, we have talked about this section in a lot, but with the chair's indulgence, I just need to understand why. I mean, did you say you were 90% Native Hawaiian? Yes. Wow, that's very unusual. Okay, so you, are very, you really were very passionate regarding Section 572C. So as somebody who's 90% Native Hawaiian, can you please explain why this is so offensive to you, this particular section? Whew. Why? Because uh, first off, for me, Coming from my roots, being a human being that I that I am, it hurts me, you know. 
I see so much, for me, where I come from, I see so much love. And then to see all of this going on, you know, it's, it's like kind of putting it back in the old days. And I don't want to see these things hurt my family, my kupunas, and my loved ones. Okay, but Leigh, let's go back to the blood quantum because I think that's what you're, that's, that's what this would affect, right? I mean, you went through the whole, you, you actually yes. went through a whole example of how this would in, impact Native Hawaiians and how it would di, uh, dilute. But, but is, there, is there something, because you did go through all that in your testimony, is there right. something yes. new that you'd like Correct. to draw? Yeah, so what exactly are you, I mean, I'm trying to understand from a blood quantum, what does that mean? Well, honestly, I want you guys to at least give us, the people, to let us decide okay. instead of Lay, you guys deciding. I'm sorry, deciding. that wasn't the question. I'm sorry, that wasn't the question. So explain to me from a blood quantum of how this would affect you from a blood quantum perspective. How will it affect me? Because this is, this, is this is where I'm from. You know, it's kind of hard to uh, be put on the spot and answer I'm a sorry, question. I'm yeah, sorry, and I don't mean to be making you nervous, but again, I've heard other people testify about this section about taking away rights from Native Hawaiians. Yeah, exactly. So is that what you're referring to? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, any other questions? All right, seeing none, let's move on to the next uh, group of testifiers. Who's next? Okay, over here. <coughs> uh, my name is uh, Ernie, Ernie Ho, and my number is 4135. <coughs> I'm strongly uh, opposed to uh, SB1. I quote from, uh, this is actually from us, one of the representatives, one of your uh, Tulsi Gabbard, marriage is a bond of love and it's a spiritual and metaphysical in nature, Gabbard told Civil Beat in an interview. It's a sacred bond and it's not an area where government should be involved. That said, marriage is a matter of divine nature that is not subject to the voter whim of our legislators or even ourselves. However, since you are determined to legislate on this issue of marriage, as much as you listen to the advocates of SB1 on marriage equality, Please give the thousands and thousands of people who are also opposed to SB1. And if you're determined to uh, pass this through, then I beseech you, ask you for the, the time to spend on this, this uh, very important bill, please. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm uh, against uh, SB1 uh, because I think at the heart and the core of this issue is the promotion of unrestricted sexual behavior. As one pastor put, there is the boundaries and guidelines that, and principles that are contained in not just Christianity, but you know, most of the major religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Jewish, uh, uh, Judaism, uh, all the major religions have such kind of uh, principles. And uh, you know, let's take away the dignified titles of equality, civil rights, and marriage, those noble titles. Are we as as you as legislators, are we as religious leaders, educators, proud of promoting such unrestricted illicit sexual practices? Uh, I'm using a, a nice word. Would we be proud of leaving a legacy for our descendants that we are instrumental in promoting, we were instrumental in promoting and facilitating this kind of unrestricted sexual practices? Are we are proud to wear the title of free sex on our t-shirts, bumper stickers on our cards, our flags? Yeah, maybe many people are, but thank you. I'm, I'm addressing, uh, okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, next, a uh, couple of testifiers with the members and audience's indulgence. The husband has a 4,000 number, but the wife has a 2,000 number, so I don't want them coming back again with the family, so we're going to take both of you at this time. Okay, go ahead. Um, we're going to test, okay, so four minutes for both of us. Okay. Um, can I ask a logistical question before my time? What was that? Can I ask a logistical question before my time? Yeah, what, was, what is that? You know the written testimonies? That's, all the written testimonies are on the record. No, 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 but do, uh, do you guys get an opportunity to read that before? Because that's going to determine what I'm going to say today. Will you guys, will that, will all the written testimony be read before the vote, I guess is my question. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm going to divert from my written testimony. Okay. Okay. Can you my, state your name and number? Emikia 2693. Thank you. Our government offers these so-called benefits to opposite sex couples, like tax breaks, medical coverage, etc., because 
those couples offer a benefit to society, the continuation of the human race and the raising up of a nation and a society. Please tell me where in history, where in the world is an opposite sex only marriage a detriment to society? If this is about money or medical benefits, then for goodness sakes, please take mine away. Not because I think it's right, as I mentioned above, there is a benefit to society, but because I would rather give up my tax, great, tax break and medical benefits in order to preserve marriage. It is the foundation for the building of a family. Don't blame society for broken families all around. Do you really think that same-sex marriage will solve that? I keep hearing that there's so much divorce and it's bad examples, and you're absolutely right. They are very bad examples of marriage. There are lots of problems within marriage, but the root, rock, the root of the problem lies in the fact that we live in a constantly decaying moral society. Marriage isn't the problem with society. Society is the problem with marriage. Society thinks nothing of dishonesty, cheating, deception. We see it constantly, and the only time the government calls us on dishonesty is if it's to the IRS. We live in a society of self-centered people. It feels good, therefore I want it. I have to teach my children. Just because your brother comes home with a treat from the teacher and you want it, doesn't mean that you can have it. Fair and equal are not the same thing. I tell my son, Dora panties on sale at Target. You want me to be fair and equal? How about I go buy you a six pack of Dora panties? He laughs because it's ridiculous and it is ridiculous. We should never have voted on this issue. I hope that I don't have to go down to the DMV and make a designation on the box that says that I'm straight. Please vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Nathaniel Kowalanikia. I'm number 4009, and I'm in strong opposition to SB1, not only in regards to its substance, but in the deceitful and dishonorable way this bill has been positioned to undermine both the will of the people and the existing law of the land. The media and the politicians who support this bill have framed this issue as Hawaii's homosexual community versus the faith-based Christian communities which comprise the population of this land. <clears throat> no, this is about the will of the people versus reckless, sloppy government. With all the objections, legal shortcomings, and overwhelming show of opposition against this bill we've seen in the last few days, it would be unfathomable if this were not to be voted down by the House. I have heard members up here okay, try to dismiss this as merely a matter of semantics, as if it's something to be simply resolved such. Yet, our legal, uh, it was legal semantics and um, grammar or however we're going to take in terms of the jujitsu that was put on the language of the Constitution that allows us to be here yet again discussing whether we're going to define marriage as between a man and a woman or expand that definition. <clears throat> as representatives of the people to pass this bill now would seem, for you to pass this bill now would be seen as either an act of gross incompetence of which you should all be removed or an act of treachery against the people of Hawaii. The people's trust has been broken by the governor, broken by the Senate, and the classless Clayton He. We are tired of being some political petri dish for the progressive movement. I ask yourselves, with whom do you stand? I know that many of you face immense political pressure from the governor, the Senate, and beyond, but this is not an agenda that is driven from our land. I, uh, apparently, we are just not as cosmopolitan and worldly as you would like us to be. Thank you. Okay, next up. I'm number 4016. Aloha, honorable cha committee chairs and members. My name is Scott Foster, Communications Director for Hawaii Advocates for Consumer Rights. Our 20-year-old statewide organization researches and testifies on public policy issues affecting the social and financial well-being of our residents inclusively. I also testify today as the former editor of the Hawaii Gay Community News during the very beginning of the marriage equality debate 23 years ago. Regarding let the people decide. Those who know the history of the U.S. Constitution understand the American founders considered rule by majority a problem. In theory, majority rule was necessary for expressing the popular will and the basis for establishing the republic.
But the founders also worried that the majority could abuse its powers to oppress a minority just as easily as a, as a king had done earlier. James Madison, alluding to slavery, wrote, It is of great importance in a republic not only to guard society against the oppression of its rulers, but to guard one part of the society against the injustice of the other part. Dr. Martin Luther King wrote in his letter from a Birmingham jail, I have yet to engage in a direct action campaign that was well-timed, at least in the view of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. For years now, I've heard the word wait. It rings in the ear of every Negro with piercing familiarity. This wait has almost always meant never. We must come to see that justice too long delayed is justice denied. Hawaii's gay community has waited 23 years for our constitutional right to marry with the many legal benefits and civil rights as recently decided by the Supreme Court. This national debate began in Hawaii, and it's time that it be settled in Hawaii. Please pass Senate Bill 1. Thank you. Mahalo. Next, please. Crystal Zane, 4,142. Chair Luke, Honorable Representative, my name is Crystal Zane. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to testify. I was a special educator in the Department of Education a few years ago, and I'm currently the Administrative Director at the church I grew up in. As a special educator, one of the biggest lessons I learned was that fair is not always equal. And fair does not always mean that everyone gets what they want, but rather what they need. All of us want different things, but what exactly do we, the people of Hawaii, need? I ask you today, wherever you stand on this issue, that you will consider what is best for society. You are our legislators and are called to represent the people. At this moment, you are representing a people divided, which is a very difficult position. Please do not simply look at the wants of the people of Hawaii, but consider what our society as a whole needs. In my opinion, the best way to consider society as a whole is to let the people vote. Let the results of this legislative decision fall on the people's hands and not yours. Let us face the consequences of our choices rather than the consequences of yours. Thank you, and I'll be praying that God will give you the wisdom and guidance needed for your decision. Thank you. I just wanted to announce that um, people with numbers 4201 to 4400, if you could register at the front in the auditorium. Thank you. Please go ahead. Aloha. My number is 4049. My name is Feki Pouha. I was born and raised on the North Shore. I grew up in Haula, and I represent a lot of the community from that area. I'm a proud graduate of Kamehameha Schools, class of 2001. I see some of my classmates here. I'm also grateful for the community I grew up in. It's unfortunate that most of our legislators are not present at this time to hear this testimony but I will move forward nonetheless. It's been, it's been an eye-opener to be here this past week and to observe what has occurred. But what has been reassuring to me is the voice of the people. I've been outside with many, many, many citizens, hundreds, who are serious about this bill not passing. I hope you understand that every demographic, every age group, I know some claim to speak for certain demographics. So I would like to say, that this bill is not what we want. I oppose Senate Bill 1. I've read over it many times. I'm a recent law school graduate. I've read over this bill. I've tried to talk to those who understand it. And I think what's happening here is that this process is being pushed too quickly, as has been mentioned. We have so much information that has been provided, yet uh, I, I still see you're in a, a difficult place. And so I think, um, you know, as we hear, let the people vote or let the federal government decide on this. This is a federal question. Why are we expending our state resources? We should be figuring out other things to solve. We don't need to spend time on this matter. It, in this bill, it seems to me that we are increasing right, rights for one group, but we're infringing on the rights of another group. Rights of conscience are, are, are just being minimalized, and I, I cannot in good faith support this bill. I have nothing against those who, who choose an alternative lifestyle from mine, but when this process is rushed too quickly and not enough input is made, you're going to get this turnout that's here. People in the rain, in the dark, in the cold, in the wind saying, let the people vote. 
Let the people vote. Let the people vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Number 4134. My name is uh, Dennis Kawamura. And this is my wife, Beverly. We are next week, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be married 43 years. And uh, we grew up in a traditional family. Our family was uh, uh, with a mother, father, sisters, brothers. And we grew up in the years where it was like the Aussie and Harriet, Harriet with, with the things that uh, we uh, were impressed with, family, family values. And over the years of our growing up and in our adulthood, we began to see erosion into the family, premarital sex, sex revolution, all of the things that, that began to start a, a movement away from traditional values. And we saw, we saw greater numbers of divorces, families with single parents, 